the Most the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 13th of October 2020. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning history. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory, and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in the memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you, members. Please be seated. Good evening, members. Um, tonight at uh, item five, we have no apologies of, or leave of absence. So we'll go to the confirmation of the minutes. I'm looking for confirmation for the minutes from the 8th of September and the 6th of uh, October. If I could have some moving minutes. Thank you, Jesse. Seconded uh, Rob. Members, any comments, changes? Not back to the move to sum up. Member to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, we have this evening two deputations. Um, the first is a deputation from uh, Susan and Geoffrey Collins on the Southwest City Living Community Centre. So if you can come forward. So Susan and Geoffrey have uh, five minutes to uh, speak to us this evening. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to address you regarding our well-loved Southwest Community Centre, which you are considering tonight. We have taken comfort in reading the document entitled The City of Adelaide 2020 to 2024 Strategic Plan Draft, which has the vision Adelaide the most livable city in the world. In particular, under the heading Role of Council, it provides the role of council is to listen, understand and respond to its community. The City of Adelaide today not only delivers traditional council services, but acts as champion, influencer, advocate and enabler to be a leader in the ways we bring benefit to the community. We work to continually develop, improve and innovate our, to achieve our vision. Swicker supports the strategic plan and the vision the council has enshrined in this document. We also argue that a well located and resourced community centre in the southwest corner of the city will promote and support every aspect of that strategic plan and beyond. 
We do not support option one before you tonight to relocate the centre to the Minor Works Building for many reasons. Administration has recommended that Council approve this option as the new home for the Adelaide Southwest Community Centre, but it's in the wrong place. Back in August 2018, when the centre property uh, was up for sale, Council resolved unanimously to continue to provide a community centre in the southwest corner of the city, located west of Morford Street. You will remember I recently sent you an extract from the minutes of that meeting. Minor works, wrong place. We argue that moving the building 570 metres away from the community it is meant to serve, locating it in a commercial area with poor access, no street frontage, and the added burden of paid parking will not encourage existing patrons to make the move. Administration provided information to the committee on 6 October that in 2018-19, the existing community centre catered for 25,000 individual visits. These numbers will only increase as the southwest corner is being targeted for medium to high density living. However, that level of activation cannot be matched by a less accessible building, which is out of the area it is meant to serve. Such a move ensures a dramatic drop in visitor numbers and the economic benefits that flow to small business in its current location, and the connections and help available to the local community will be lost. An attempt to save money by moving the centre to the Minor Works building is more likely to cost the city in the long run. It is working fine where it is. We also believe a community centre should be regarded as an asset, not a liability. We know that there is an ongoing problem with attracting people to the city, so the last thing needed is to nobble something which is already working. The current level of activation, not matched by other facilities in the area, provides economic benefits to small business, helps the local community to thrive, entices groups from greater metropolitan area to the city, and although its services can be used to improve environment, uh, oh, and through its services, can be used to improve environmental waste and tourist outcomes. At the last community meeting, administration indicated that although the Minor Works building was put forward as the preferred option, in better times, another option could have been promoted. So they were looking to the elected members for direction as to where to go. We asked the, elect the elected members to champion the Southwest community and approve option two to purchase a new property, hopefully with increased floor area, to cater for the projected residential growth and to allow other organisations who have outgrown the current centre to return. The support provided by this activation to both the community and to small business in the southwest will provide tangible benefits to the city's economy and livability and reflect the council's aspirations in the, in the strategic plan. We understand that it may not be possible to complete such a purchase prior to the expiry of the current lease in February next year. And we have grave concerns that if this is the case, decision will be made to relocate the centre to the Minor Works building for the time being. This could easily become a permanent solution in the future to the detriment of the Southwest community and the city as a whole. If you embrace the principles you have set out in the strategic plan and there is no property for sale in the desired area, we ask that a temporary centre be set up in a rental property west of Morford Street. In finishing, we would like to thank you, our elected members, for listening to us over the past few weeks. The positive and helpful attitude of everyone we have approached has certainly buoyed our spirits, and we appreciate your support with this issue. Now we need you to be our champions, to follow the excellent vision for the community you have set out in the strategic plan. Thank you very much. We have a second deputation this evening. Thank you. Um, which is from Kieran Snake, also from the Southwest Community Centre. Kieran, if you'd like to join us, and again, there's five minutes. Lord Mayor, councillors, thank you for allowing me to address you tonight. My name is Kieran Snape, and I'm a local resident living on Wright Street in the southwest corner of the city. Like many people here tonight, I'm worried about the uncertainty surrounding our local community centre. The Southwest Community Centre on Sturt Street is an important part of our community and its value cannot be measured in dollars alone. It is part of our culture, 
It provides a sense of belonging. It builds networks. And of course, it provides viable amenities to residents and visitors alike. It also provides much needed space from English language classes for our Chinese friends and neighbors to exercise sessions to which I promised my partner I will one day attend. It also brings in foot traffic for local businesses, which is much needed as the Southwest doesn't have its own typical main street like other predominantly residential areas like the Southeast with Hutt Street and North Adelaide with Melbourne Street. I understand that we can't keep the existing site, but we need a new location, one that is big enough and as close to the existing location as possible. West of Morfitt Street, south of Gooch Street, visible and accessible to all. For many years now, the future of the centre has been on shaky ground. And so I am now urging Council to make a commitment to purchase and importantly manage a permanent home for the centre. This will dispel any uncertainty going forward. Residents and businesses in the area deserve nothing less. I also think it makes good uh, fiscal policy to purchase rather than to rent. To this end, I'm excited to lodge um, this petition with 581 overwhelmingly local signatures gathered in less than three weeks. Check out those area codes. It is clear what the community wants and I have faith that council will listen. Just one of the brief points, I've heard that one of the options proposed is that the administration of a new centre be placed under the local community group. I know for a fact that this local group of wonderful people, I might add, aren't equipped to run the centre. So I urge council to reject this option. The centre is a council asset and needs to be managed by council. Thank you for your time. Thanks very much, Karen. Uh, members, we did get a third request for a deputation this evening um, in addition to those on the agenda that was declined. The deputation was from Ms Elizabeth Rushbrook in relation to wakefulness upon performance and it was declined on the grounds that the request didn't relate to business of the Council on any current or upcoming items for consideration. Members, we, uh, I'm going to go to the petition which is 8.1 and ask that someone move that the petition be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, second by Councillor Abraham today. Uh, and members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that petition has been accepted. Um, members, I am actually going to uh, bring with leave from the Chamber item 10.3 forward on the agenda tonight. Now, can I just have a quick show of hands if everybody's happy that I bring that forward? Thank you very much. Um, item 10.3 is, of course, the Community Services South West City presenting to the Council. Excuse me, Lord Mayor, I need to disclose an actual uh, conflict of interest. I sit on the um, coordinating group, which is the executive of the Greens. The Greens have um, previously rented the um, minor works building for um, some of their activities and events and there is the potential that they may well do so in the future, given um, that uh, tonight's discussion potentially relates to access to the um, centre. I wish to disclose an actual conflict of interest and I will leave the room and excuse myself from the discussion. Thank you, Councillor Sims. We'll call you back when the item is finished on the agenda. So, members, we have before you uh, a motion, Councillor Donovan. And Deputy Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I'd like to propose an alternate motion, which I have circulated. So and Deputy Lord Mayor, was that you seconding that? Thank you. So uh, we've just had a very eloquent explanation as to why uh, we in fact should be looking to approve option two, the purchase of a new building. We've had great conversation amongst uh, the council about why option two will fulfill the needs of the community. That being that we need a resource that will continue to provide what we need in the Southwest community within the right location. Noting also that the volunteer capacity within the Southwest community is a huge part of what makes this such a success within the community. 
Um, the option that was proposed uh, by administration uh, is not appropriate in this in this setting and acknowledging that the minor works is available is a separate issue to what we need within this community building. So I've put forward an alternate motion and that has been with the um, support and discussion of my fellow South Ward Councillor, Councillor Hyde, and with uh, the support of, of Council, um, with many other councillors. So instead we're looking to purchase a new building for the South West Community Centre based on the same floor signs or Above. I won't go through the motion, it's there in front of us. Everyone's had a chance to read it, I believe. I've circulated it already. Um, and I, I, uh, I endorse the council to support this option. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, just briefly, Lord Mayor, thank you to Helen for, for drafting. I think it's a very, very good, uh, well-drafted alternate motion. Thank you for incorporating the 50%. Um, uh, plus or minus, I'm hoping it's going to be a plus. That gives the administration the ability to look at properties that are a bit um, more uh, than, than what we would otherwise. Um, I, th I think as well, this no noting that we are financially constrained, um, this motion presents us with the opportunity to get something that we could see a return on down the track later, and a return that if, you know, in five, six, seven years time, if potentially developed, we would then incorporate, I would say, um, a community centre into that that we've retained control of. But that's for, that's for another council to decide. Um, the important thing is that in reading the report, um, and this came out somewhat at committee, uh, it was it was detailed as a risk that the community a group who would be using the minor works building may not uh, uh, may not support that as an option. But if you really dig into that statement, the reason they don't support it is because it's not going to be used. And if it's not going to be used, we, I mean, what's the point of having it at all? If the community are not going to use the facility, um, then you might as well not have one. So um, that's why the minor works is isn't appropriate. Now, the minor works itself is a separate matter. Um, and if it's underutilised, we need to deal with that um, separately, whether that's uh, looking at what we're using it for, who we're offering it to, what's occupying the space, um, and what have you. But that's a separate matter entirely. The important thing is that um, this community in the southwestern, you know, far southwestern corner of the city, um, has a facility that it can use. So uh, I think this motion achieves that. I think um, when you compare uh, the operating expenses of the current centre, um, which arguably we should have bought before, um, but when you compare the operating expenses of that centre with um, how one might service debt on a new uh, property, um, you could actually end up better off financially anyway uh, and secure an asset which will appreciate over time and presents a commercial opportunity as well as a community opportunity um, down the track. So I think it's, a, it's an excellent option um, uh, for more than one reason. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, a couple of things, questions to the administration. One is a minor thing. Um, I'd assume you'd be happy to interpret that 50% uh, uh, variation cost to mean that uh, if it was 60% cheaper, that would be fine. Uh, um, it's just that the wording says you can't you can't purchase if it's uh, you know 70 or 80 percent cheaper technically. So um, I, I assume that you're happy with that interpretation. It's common sense. Um, more importantly, um, with respect to a uh, a the, the the term that. Uh, binds us to purchase by the end of the next year. Um, given your experience with commercial property, um, might that be uh, something that um, uh, is adverse to uh, the best outcome uh, for the council in terms of commercial, uh, in terms of getting something at the best possible market value, given there's a sort of sort of Damocles hanging over it? Um, might it be better if that was two years uh, to allow the greatest sort of play on, on what is unfolding economically in terms of the market next year? CEO? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. It's a good comment to make. And um, all I can say is I'm comfortable with the recommendation as, pre as presented because it provides opportunity. Um, if there's any need to come back to council uh, for a variation or for some guide, further guidance, we will be doing that anyway. Um, so, yeah, rest assured that um, we'll come back to you if we need to. And if uh, I may, Councillor Mackey.
Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and I thank uh, Councillors Donovan and Deputy Lord Mayor Hyde uh, for the motion, uh, the, very, uh, the, the, the revised motion. I'm happy to support it. Um, I think the predominantly residential uh, qu quarter of the south part of, of um, Adelaide City uh, um, deserves the same kind of community infrastructure opportunities as are enjoyed in North Adelaide and also in the southeast, uh, where the Box Factory, of course, has been a community home uh, for many, many, many years. Um, and uh, I think this is, uh, from a from an economic perspective, given the cost of borrowings at, at this stage, it's a prudent it's a prudent thing uh, to to do as well. And if it helps to provide longer term. Uh, security and through that encouragement to the community organisations who would make it their home, then that potentially, hopefully also, uh, helps to strengthen the future sustainability and viability of those groups. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So members, just um, and just a, a, another point, Councillor Kira, in terms of the time frame that was to really to give some comfort to the Southwest Community Centre that they that it was an interim while we find something and not uh, a permanent move. Um, I, if I can also thank my South World councillors uh, for working together on this motion, and, and also if I can actually um, just. Uh, I'm not sure if I can do this, but I'm going to say thank you to Susan and Geoffrey, uh, Kieran and of course um, Marion. Um, you did come and see me on several occasions and I know you've been very active in that space, uh, working on behalf of the community and working with our Southwood councillors. So I thank you very much for the time and effort that you put in. Um, members, if, no, if there's nothing else, I'll go to the mover to summer. Councillor Jonathan. Thanks Lord Mayor, this is looking like it's going to be a, a unanimously supported. I'm hoping that we've <laughs> um, Sound like a race call. <laughs> which is a great outcome and I think um, everyone recognises both the community health and wellbeing outcomes that will be associated with, with this certainty to the community as well as all of the related benefits, which is an excellent outcome. I would very much also like to thank um, the administration for all of the work that they did in pulling together this information in a pretty short time frame, in a very difficult time um, during COVID when there was a lot of other things happening. So we're very appreciative of all of that information that was brought to council. And with that, I look forward, I'm hoping, to unanimous support. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Could I have that recorded as unanimous, please? Oh, Councillor Sims, um, if we could ask Councillor Sims to come back into the room. That would be great. Before I go to the next item. Um, thank you, members. That takes us then back to the agenda. Um, and we go to item 9.1. Uh, Mark one one, which is the advice of Appler uh, to note. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Uh, I just had a, a really quick question, Lord Mayor. I noticed from the minutes um, that there didn't appear to be a briefing from the administration. Um, was there any discussion with the administration about the nature of the foundation that was proposed? <laughs> I know you spoke, but I mean, uh, the administrative structure and all that, was that canvas? Well, the administrative structure has to be decided once this motion goes through the floor. Okay. Oh, I just, there's no mention of that in the motion. It just says to set it up. Thank you. Councillor Knoll? Members? If not, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to item 9.2 on the agenda tonight, which is the advice recommendations of the audit committee from the 9th of December. And I look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord <coughs> Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor, uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, no. Councillor Abraham today. Members? If not, back to the move to sum up. Sum up. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 10.1, which is the Golden Wattle Park Community Land Management Plan and Building Concept. And I'll look for a mover. Oh, tripping, sorry. Members, if I could have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Canole. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? Yes, sir. 
Councillor Carroll. Members? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, I am not going to support this, and uh, I urge other members to think about this very carefully. Um, this is a combined community land management plan and building concept approval um, in what some stakeholders have observed recently as a new practice where council, instead of developing a community land management plan with high principles, um, develops one that comes with at least a proposal for some kind of development um, rather than just having the high principles associated with it, which was not my understanding of what was intended by community land management plans, that they're always accompanied by proposals for development. Um, so that's a cause for some disappointment. And more so because the plan is deficient, uh, and I did mention this committee, in that it fails to tackle at least one serious issue, and that is the setting of a policy with regard to the showgrounds continuing to use our parklands as an open air car park. And I might add, in parts of Park 21, there are some um, uh, threatened species um, of uh, uh, flora, uh, which under any circumstances uh, might be at risk. But look, in any case, uh, my other concern is that this is a monster of a building. Um, the current footprint is 390 square metres, and it will grow by about 30% to 566 square metres, uh, making a bit of a mockery of the Council's long-held policy of ensuring that footprint remains the same, if not shrunk. But on top of that, this is a two-level building. This is two storeys, two levels. And so the actual floor space is, according to the information that the administration has given us, it, it's going from 390 square metres to 1,360 square metres, um, which includes, as you can see, an area at page 58, which to all intents and purposes looks to me like a bit of a dining room, or at least a facility at which people will be able to eat. Um, which again poses a threat to all of our businesses in the area. If these clubs are now going to be able to open with dining facilities, then that's not good. That's not a thing that the businesses, the hospitality of the area would welcome. But look, uh, the other uh, matter about this proposal, um, which is difficult to swallow, is that this is the first time I can remember that a proposal contains provision for a road, a road, a new road onto the parklands where there is none at the moment, and a car park for 112 cars. Uh, this is pretty grim stuff. In fact, I'd go so far, Lord Mayor, as to say this is absolutely a shock. Members? If not, I will go to Councillor Canole to sum up. Sorry, Councillor Mackey, you're going to have to wave at me a little bit. So, um, sorry, I will actually allow. I did uh, not apologies, see Lord Mayor. I should have been a little more more. But could I could I just ask a question of the administration? And, and um, following on from um, Councillor Martin's comments, as I read it, recommendation four notes that the uh, a reduced building footprint that would have to come back to council anyway, but that would not exceed 465 square metres as defined by the building parklands building design guideline and that within that footprint would also desirably be the undergrounding of the rainwater tanks that are referred to um, in, in addition. Um, that just doesn't quite sound yeah, just a clarification on that. CEO? Three, Lord Mayor. Yes, as I understand it, that once funding is secured, um, that those plans will come back to Council. But Christy Anthony is sitting here and you might have more detail than me. Thanks, Christy. Yes, thank you, through the Chair. Um, I understand that this is a, a, a a dream plan at this stage. They would like to get in principal permission, which has gone through APLA and been uh, approved to uh, raise funds for this, but the footprint that we will um, we're asking you to approve is does not exceed 465 square metres. 
on the ground service. So thank you with that. Sorry, Councillor Knoll. Sorry, Councillor Moran. Sorry, could, could, sorry, could the administration just remind me what the current footprint is? CEO. Thanks, Christy. Yes, the existing uh, footprint is 390 square metres. This is a, um, an area, as I understand, an issue that has come up before in relation to uh, what constitutes the, the, foot, the footprint and what constitutes the whole space, including the overhang and the underground um, underground uh, water, what are they called, tanks. So the new footprint that we're asking you to approve, it's 465 square metres, including uh, all of the whole ground building footprint, including those tanks. So just to, to make clear, so the, I always understand the hard stand as the footprint. Um, so we've got 390 square metres of hard stand now, uh, replaced by 465 square metres. That is my understanding. So how's that, in, that, how's that reducing the current footprint? CEO, I, it, it's what's in the report, CEO. Yeah, Christy, can you explain that for us? I may have to take that uh, detail on notice as Ray isn't here at this stage and I understand the notes that I have uh, have said that um, the council is looking to a two building level design not exceeding 465 square metres on the ground footprint. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have the uh, detail to explain that to you, you exactly. If you'd like, if I could um, take that on notice, I can potentially get back to you before the end of the meeting. Uh, well, look, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, having asked those questions, I'd prefer that this item be deferred um, because clearly the math doesn't add up and it's a two-storey building. I, I, I'm not necessarily against this building, but this is not a decrease in area, which is one of our very strong principles. Um, and we need somebody in the administration that can actually answer our questions. Um, I gather there's no great hurry for this, as um, I think France said, or somebody said it's a dream proposal. I don't like in principle agreements for dream proposals. Uh, that is a, um, a pretty big tick for a proposal. This is uh, too big and I would never approve it and I'm not going to give it a dream proposal tick either. But to give it a chance, I think um, this item should be deferred until we have correct, we have clear information so we don't vote blind. If I have a second. If not, I'll Councillor, you're moving a motion to defer. I'm moving to defer. And Councillor Sims, you're the next, Till the next council meeting. Or, as, or if there's time constraints, especially if, I, if I could just actually find out, thank you, Councillor. Are there any time restraints on this being approved at this meeting? No, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, so, members, we'll vote on deferral. Those in favour? Those against? The matter's deferred until November. So now members, we're voting on the deferral. So that was the amendment. We're now voting on the deferral. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried, thank you. <laughs> I'd just like to propose a reordering of the agenda. I'm just conscious we've got lots of um, motions on notice uh, tonight. Um, many from yourself, um, Lord Mayor, and I don't want us to run out of time um, to discuss them. I would suggest that we um, reorder the agenda so that we move those forward um, to the first half of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims, I don't support that because I would like staff to be able to leave when we finish the council business, but I'll ask the Chamber if the Chamber wishes to defer uh, to change so that the um, uh, motions on notice come forward. The reason that the motions on notice are at the end of the agenda is so that the staff can actually go home. Could I speak to it, Lord Mayor? Uh, if the, is... So, um, it's with leave of meeting. So those in favour of changing the agenda? Those against? The agenda stays as is, thank you. Um, 
That takes us to 10.2, which is a black spot nominations. Councillor Martin, are you moving that? I'm moving an alternative, if I may, Lord Mayor. Yes, Councillor. And all I wish to do is to delete two and four. And I'll look for a seconder. Members, uh, the councillor has asked for an amendment which um, deletes part two and part four, and I'm looking for a seconder. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I, I have uh, uh, no problem with uh, black spot funding the process or uh, any part of it, really, and uh, I welcome particularly um, the uh, Jeffcott Montague Ore project because it's a matter of long standing concern in my neck of the woods. But I do have a problem with two and four, um, where the administration is asking us to overturn uh, what we agreed to in April last year, that is to have these matters to be brought to us for sign off, and that's virtually all it is. It's a, a procedural thing. Um, we are, um, as the administration notes, uh, at one, the owner and manager of all public roads in the city of Adelaide. And we have a commitment, as it says, to work towards providing a road network that allows all road users to reach their destination safely. So look, I, I want to know, and I want all of the elected members to have the chance to know um, what's under consideration, uh, how we've arrived at that decision, and then uh, to have the opportunity here in council just to tick off on it. Uh, and that's important, uh, not just for being across things, but for our community as well, because our communities uh, will often want to talk to us about uh, road black spots, areas that they regard as having significant problems, and sometimes that uh, re require uh, a formal consideration of council. Now, of course, um, I know this is a uh, largely federal and state funding matter that we don't have a great role to play in it, but it's just one of those things where elected bodies really need to be across it, um, even if it's only to say, yep, take that. Uh, and that's all I'm asking. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, did you wish uh, to speak to it? Members, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I um, support this. I, I particularly note the removal of point four. I think um, elected members have expressed on many occasions, or some of us have, um, our dissatisfaction with the use of um, e-news to communicate um, key uh, council outcomes. It's not personally my preferred um, mode of communication. There are ongoing issues with access to um, the uh, council system remotely, which do not seem to be able to be resolved. So my preference would be to um, get a uh, you know a proper email, standalone email, um, advising of um, key. Uh, outcomes like that rather than to rely on um, a notice provided in e news. Um, and indeed, that's a point that's been made uh, on many, many occasions in committee and in council. Thank you. Members, if not, back to the move to sum up. Councillor Martin? No, no. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Oh. That is lost. Uh, members, that takes us then to item. Oh, sorry, I, my apologies, members. That, then we go back to the uh, original motion, um, which I will then ask someone to move. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and seconder, Councillor Kerr. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Me Councillor Kerr, members. If not, Deputy Lord Mayor, to sum up. Uh, to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried. Um, thank you, members. That takes us to 10.4, which is the proposed event in the Adelaide Parklands for Adelaide Festival 2020. Uh, members, I have a conflict of interest as I am on the board of the Adelaide Festival Corporation, um, and I will ask the Deputy Lord Mayor to take the chair for this item. Deputy Lord Mayor. I think a second mover and a seconder. Move Councillor Kouros, second to Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Kouros, do you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today. Members, Councillor Martin. 
Hello, Lord Mayor. I'm very surprised to see this being moved by a North Adelaide councillor. Um, this is a matter of great concern in North Adelaide. Um, the location of the event is Elder Park. Events at this location have been the subject of numerous complaints from residents of North Adelaide over the years who've been impacted by noise in the early hours admitted from this uh, very site. Uh, and this is just not uh, people complaining for the sake of complaining. It is uh, the conclusion of this council uh, that there are topographical features about North Adelaide which funnel noise along the river and up the hill. In fact, uh, we've noted that um, uh, previously when council uh, debated and adopted the Adelaide Parklands Event Management Plan uh, for this park, stipulating because we know that residents, well, those of us who live there, that those of us who live there know that residents will have issues with noise in the early hours of the morning. And that is an inconvenience, particularly for people who've got to get up and go to work or run their business. If they're being uh, disturbed until two in the morning by noise coming from there, that is an issue. Now, look, I don't have a problem uh, with the festival. I'm a great supporter of the festival. Uh, and in fact, I've been arguing against the cuts that have been made to the festival budget by the, uh, the virtual Team Adelaide Council. But this is clearly a breach of faith with the residents of North Adelaide. We told them our APEN, our strategy says weeknights, no noise after 12. And this one, this proposal here before us says uh, 2 a.m. on Fridays. Now, I do urge members um, to listen to what I'm saying. It is an issue in North Adelaide. Uh, and let me tell you, they will complain if we agree to this. Uh, they'll be livid by it. Councillor Mackey. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, presiding member. Um, just to clarify, Councillor Martin, I think the intent of the motion is that um, that midnight to 2 a.m. Uh, is actually Saturday morning, so it's Saturday morning and Sunday morning, not not a not a week morning, a weekday morning. Um, someone confirm that? Mm, yes, CEO. Could we get a clarification of what is a weekday? Through you. Um, and what isn't a weekday? Yeah, well. that is that is as described. Um, yes. So we're talking about Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Sunday. Excellent. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, it's been a long um, eye rolling from councillors that don't live in North Adelaide. The geog geographical features of North Adelaide means that if you live on Jeffcott Street or um, uh, what's that street by the uh, race, uh, hospital? Oh, yep, yeah. um, it is like it's in your backyard. And these are people, I don't think uh, anybody stops their work week at Friday anymore. I think most people are working pretty much every day. Um, I know everybody I know does. Um, so this has been promised by the Lord Mayor when she, um, she electioneered for the council election that she she understood the noise. I think at some stage she actually went out there to visit um, some of the people that lived in Montefiore Towers and it is appalling. I can't hear it at all. Some streets you cannot hear a thing. Other streets it's like somebody's got a boom box outside your window and it also depends on which way the wind's blowing. But with sub last council and uh, councillors that were on last council and this council promise not to do this to this section of North Adelaide again, and indeed the Women's and Children's Hospital and the new Royal Adelaide Hospital too, in that other direction. It, it is a weird sort of thing. You wouldn't think it would, would uh, uh, the sound would travel, but it must be something to do with the River Valley. I do not know, but the noise here uh, till two o'clock in the morning is 12 o'clock fine. People can sit up to then and put up with it, but two o'clock is well in the time that people should be allowed to, to be able to sleep in their home. Um, and this this stops people doing that. And I think we should limit it to 12 o'clock. Members? If not, I'm good. Councillor Kerry. Uh, to the administration, are there not facilities uh, with which um, are there not existing guidelines which allow for the amelioration uh, of noise between 12am and 2am uh, that could be utilised in this case? 
Through you, DLM. Um, Claire, can you respond? Thanks. Uh, through the presiding, acting presiding member, um, yes, we have very comprehensive um, noise guidelines, um, and it um, uh, relates to the positioning of speakers. Um, and so it does require noise to be monitored. It requires um, noise um, if any resident um, wishes to complain. Um, they're able to do that there and then. Um, and so we do undertake a quite strict uh, overview of um, noise emissions in the city. So Mark. Hey, look, uh, uh, th through you, um, uh, acting presiding member, or Deputy or whatever you are. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> no. Um, uh, look, I, 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 I'm confused because I thought the question that was asked was, what are the specific measures between midnight and 2 a.m. that are implemented? Could the administration confirm there is no difference between uh, the measures that are taken between 10 p.m. and midnight and between midnight and 2 a.m. when it comes to noise emissions? Um, after midnight, noise is required to be reduced. Um, so that's in our operating guidelines. So we make less noise after midnight on every night than we do before midnight. Is, is that what, what I'm being told? Yes, that's correct. Um, and it's at a decibel and it's connected to the base, which we know is what our residents in particular complain about. Oh, thank you. That will be a great comfort to everyone in North Adelaide, I don't think. Members. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I guess um, I think in this conversation, um, I hope that a, a lot of the fears that uh, Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran had in regards to the noise management has been um, quite, uh, answered for them. But I understand that uh, after midnight, there is a criteria in regards to the noise level. I understand that we have a really good policy in regards to mitigating noise. And I also um, feel that it is important that we do support the arts. And if this is what they need, especially during this time where they have suffered a lot during this COVID, I wouldn't want to be putting any difficult uh, restrictions on them in order to achieve what they need to achieve um, to get back um, what they've lost over the COVID period. And I know that North Adelaide residents will agree with me in saying that because the arts is very important to them. And as Councillor um, Mackey has stated, it, it's not every night, it's a uh, weekend public holidays. Um, so I know that the North Adelaide residents will be very forgiving if they have any um, issue with noise. But I understand um, that the biggest issue with North Adelaide residents is when we had the pontoon, and I think that we didn't have um, the proper uh, I don't know what do you want to call it, negation of noise in regards to having the base over the water and it was resonating back to the residents. And I think this is not on, well, it is not on the pontoon, um, it's on land, we've got procedures in place and I know that also we've mitigated the noise in regards to having events at Pinky Flat in which we turn the speakers the other way and that also helped the, the, the noise um, level as well. So there has been a lot of work done within council in regards to mitigating that noise and I wouldn't and I, and I wouldn't want to um, be um, making it difficult um, for the art um, present or at all um, in regards to what they've suffered like I said during COVID so and I'm sure the residents of North Adelaide would appreciate that as well. Thank you members those in favour those against division that's carried division has been called would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Thanks. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canal, Councillor Ho, Councillor Carer, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Sims. Could we please fetch the Lord now?
takes us to. So members, that takes us to item 10.5 on the agenda, which is the regulated tree removal, Wellington Square, Katnadu. And I look for a mover. Whoa, sorry, I looked up. Can I just ask one question for a moment? What, is there a picture of it in here somewhere? Uh, I, see you. Is there a, I think there was a report sent around, yes. Councillor Moran. Well, yes. No, I think there was a report emailed around. I missed that. I must have been in news. I will move it, uh, but next time I'd like a picture to show you what Okay, I'm looking for a seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Uh, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it at all? No. Other than that, Councillor Kouros? Members? Councillor Martin? Oh, just uh, to say, Lord Mayor, look, I had trouble opening that link and I'm uh, uh, grateful uh, for Clinton sending me that uh, report. No, it was Matthew, I think, who sent it to me. Uh, and I was able to read it. And I must say to the administration, it was a good report. Um, it was very clear. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, Councillor Moran, to sum up? Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 10.6 is the City of Adelaide Annual Report 2019 to 2020, and I look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Canal. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just a few questions, um, if I may, that I, I wanted to clarify. Um, so, page 248 of the document uh, as a whole, which is page 87 of the annual report. It details um, allowances for council members. What I'm seeking to clarify is, are the figures um, provided in the right-hand corner here, are they the um, total uh, remunerations collected by the council, uh, by the councillors, including um, their board remunerations, or are they um, additional? So, by way of example, um, the Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, $37,838.75. Um, they are also on um, the Central Market Authority, which pays $15,450. Is the figure of $37,000, um, et cetera, inclusive, or are they earning $37,000, et cetera, plus $15,450 plus the payment. I will ask the question. I think we get the question that you're asking, Councillor Sims. Thank you. Just one moment. Sorry, it was page 87 that you're referring to, Councillor Sims. Yeah, 248. And 248 of the um, agenda. Would you like to? Through the presiding member, I need to just double check the um, the legislative piece associated with that, which I don't have to hand. So it's in relation to a specific piece of legislation. Just looking at it, it does look like it's just in relation to. Um, council committees, uh, not necessarily board positions, but I'd need to double check. No, that's fine. And look, apologies for not um, contacting you before the meeting. Um, it's something I only spotted just before um, reading through. But um, I, yes, I guess what I was just seeking to understand was whether you know, it's the case that there are some councillors that are being paid close to $40,000 a year, plus also um, earning additional um, thousands of dollars Thank on top you, of Councilor that through Sims. board payments. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, members, any other questions? Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, I just wanted to clarify that I think it is inclusive of all of those things, bearing in mind that I was only appointed Deputy Lord Mayor in December and only became a member of the ACMA board in March, I think. 
So, so I think yeah, it is we will, inclusive we, of those yeah, figures. We'll do it particularly um, for that financial year. So yeah, it's not, it's not, I'm not going to go in particular individual. No, of course not. But, of course not. Thank you, <laughs> members. Members, I will move on. Are there any? Would anybody else like to speak to the motion before us? Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes. Look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I, I do have a couple of questions, but I'll, I'll um, uh, just say a couple of things uh, briefly, uh, and that is that um, I am grateful to the administration for providing the level of detail it now provides. When I uh, was first elected to council, there was no information about uh, the, the salary of the CEO, the directors, the associate directors. There was no information about the number of staff although there's a discussion about how many people are actually working here at council. And we certainly didn't have a breakdown in relation to uh, uh, the uh, uh, gender of staff, diversity and so on. And so this does represent a much improved report on uh, that which was the case uh, only three or four years ago. I, I, I would like to ask the administration, however, to consider um, for the purposes of openness and frankness with our community to uh, consider a comparison with previous years of employment. Um, for example, uh, employees who identify as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, 11. Um, I'm not sure whether that's more or less than last year because I can't remember. Um, I can't remember yes, whether sorry. the gender balance is the same as well. So it would be enormously helpful and I think probably it's a good story that Council has to tell by providing that comparison. And if it's not, in any case, we're being open and frank with our ratepayers. I do ask the administration, and this is the question, um, uh, to help me uh, because I've been reading this report um, for some time now, Lord Mayor, I go to bed every night and uh, I find it helps me uh, sleep. But in the process of studying the document, I have been looking for uh, mention of, and I know it wasn't mentioned in our budget consultation, uh, um, the once in a generation staff reduction uh, to which we've allocated $14 million. And I just can't find it. I would have thought that a once in a generation change to our staffing structure would make it to the annual report. Uh, is is there is it in here somewhere? I can't see it. Uh, could you point me to it? CEO. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, it will make it into the annual report in the coming year. So, yes. But that that process began in the uh, previous financial year. We began our redundancies in February, March, uh, and my recollection is that in the period up until uh, the end of June, we shed something in excess of 100 staff. Yeah, through your Lord Mayor, at that time we were talking about our casual workforce. Um, so when we, when we report to, in the coming current year annual report, you'll be provided with a, a clear breakdown of the staff movement. And Lord Mayor, uh, through you, can I have an assurance that those uh, reductions in staff, which occurred prior to June 30th, in uh, 2020 will be included in the 2021 report because they're not in the 1920 report. CEO, my understanding is that we've reported on the staff as 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 it is. CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, look, annual reports are required to report on the year in which they apply. If you're suggesting there's a, a a failure with this current report to accurately reflect what's occurred. Happy to take that advice from you. Um, but from my perspective, the report as provided is accurate. Um, okay, and those people who've gone will be in the next uh, report. I, I, I'm happy with that, Lord Mayor. That's a, an excellent answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish Just to two speak? points of clarification, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Shedding staff does not apply because when you're talking about fixed term contracts for casuals um, who were not renewed because of the pandemic. Um, so that is a complete mischaracterization. Furthermore, the budget was adopted in August, which is outside of the annual report that Councillor Martin reads to go to sleep at night. So yeah, and just as, wanted to highlight that. As per the reply, it will be in next year's annual report. Councillor Sims, is that a question? Uh, no, a statement I didn't. Uh, speak to the um, motion. I just wanted to um, thank administration for um, the work on this. Um, I thought it was very, very comprehensive. Um, it provides a huge amount of detail on um, the work of the organisation 
um, and also highlights lots of the really good things that um, are being done um, by administration during what I think is a very challenging period. Um, so I just wanted to recognise that. I know sometimes we can get caught in the weeds of different elements of the report, but I didn't want to um, lose sight of acknowledging the work of the staff on, on the report. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Oh, sorry. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, members, 10.7 is the committee updated terms of reference, and I'll look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, and I'll look for a seconder. Members, thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today. Members? Councillor Martin. Oh, uh, just a quick question to the administration, Lord Mayor. Uh, there's no real reference to rules related to electronic meetings, and I understand that the administration and the Deputy Lord Mayor have negotiated that we will have electronic meetings at some stage during each month. Uh, is there a reason for the omission? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, a reason for what omission was that? Rules related to the conduct of meetings that are held electronically. Did the same rules, <laughs> Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, the same meeting procedures apply. Um, all right, Lord Mayor, look, may I speak to this then? You may. Thank you. Uh, look, um, uh, that's uh, uh, disturbing to hear because I, I have been uh, checking around with other councils and they all seem to have their own rules. Even little old Utterly has an electronic council meeting participation schedule. It has provisions to be included in the City of Unley standing orders related to the conduct of meetings and it canvases uh, a range of matters, including termination of uh, connection through electronic meetings. <coughs> it has uh, uh, information about recording of divisions. Uh, it has information about a mixed quorum. Uh, it has information about who should and who should not host a meeting. Um, it, it is entirely unsatisfactory that a capital city um, is relying on a set of rules for meetings face to face when there are rules that govern the holding of meetings in suburban councils. But moreover, there are substantial rules for the federal parliament uh, related to the conduct of meetings by electronic means. So um, it is, in my view, um, a, a shortcoming in this proposal that's presented to us for approval. I mean, there are things in there about which I'm happy, but I would have thought um, that the inclusion of these matters would be useful. Uh, and if it assists the administration in any way, I'm, I'm happy to provide the documents to assist them. Um, uh, perhaps we could ask the administration to have a look at what other councils are doing and the way in which the rules are affected. And, uh, Councillor Lord, Martin, can I just check with you, are they for council meetings or are they for committee meetings? They're for meetings. meetings are they for stop. council meetings or for committee meetings? Um, they cover both. Uh, it says uh, uh, public health emergency, electronic participation in council meetings, that one. This one says electronic council meeting participation but refers to committee as well. And Moreover, it actually, and I think it's quite useful, Lord Mayor, it, it uh, singles out inconsistencies between the procedures for face-to-face -face meetings and electronic meetings, and they are dealt with in the documents. So uh, I'm happy to provide this, um, and if uh, uh, the administration would have a look at it, I'd be grateful. Thank you. I'll just ask for a comment for the CEO in terms of what's covered in our standard. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. We have an addendum to our standing orders which covers our meeting procedures. If there's any uncertainty with council members, I'm happy to take that on board, happy to provide clarity to you. But it's, from my understanding, talking with the team, it is already adequately covered. However, I hear what you're saying, and perhaps not through e-news, I'll provide you with some clarity and some more information, just to be sure. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, in light of um, this discussion, I, I hear what the CEO is saying, but I, I would like to propose an amendment, and that is an additional point two that requests that administration develop guidelines for the use of committee meetings online as an additional point two. 
request that administration develop guidelines for uh, electronic um, committee meetings. And I'll look for a seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I hear what the CEO um, is saying and I appreciate that undertaking. I guess my reason for um, seeking some guidelines is I think it's very important that we um, identify the circumstances in which it's appropriate to have a meeting conducted um, electronically. And one of the things that um, has worried me is if electronic meetings are simply being used for reasons of convenience and at the discretion of the presiding member at the time, when really I think uh, there are legitimate um, health reasons, health grounds, um, for why um, it may be appropriate to um, hold a, a meeting um, online. And, you know, at the moment, people are being encouraged, if you're, they're feeling unwell, to um, participate remotely, not to come into a physical space, and so on. Um, but if it's simply just for mere convenience, and I think, you know, that's that's problematic and not consistent with the um, the uh, state government's um, approach to this. So I would hope that the guidelines could look at some of that um, criteria, but also look at things like the use of muting and so on um, in meetings that are um, conducted in an electronic space. So that's the, the reason why I'm requesting that we go a little bit further and, and get some guidelines that flesh out those things. CEO, did you wish to comment? I just needed to clarify with you and for for the purposes of the meeting, in the report it explains that we have a resolution of council that we as administration are working to, which um, approves the return to the use of Zoom for, for committee meetings. Um, and basically that's the intent for all meetings unless uh, myself and the presiding member determine otherwise. So it's not the other way around. So the, the understanding I've got is that the expectation is our meetings will be online rather than in face-to-face -face for committees, unless there is a decision not to. Okay, thank you, Councillor Moran. Did you wish to I use sec as the seconder? Would you like I'm to? I'm a bit horrified by what the Lord Mayor. I, I thought it was every third, and then when the health crisis over, it wouldn't be any. Um, I don't like Zoom. I don't like working from home. Um, are you still working on a hybrid model? Through here, Lord Mayor. Yes, we have progressed to trials. It will it will be implemented for the next committee meeting. Fantastic. So, if councillors actually want to, uh, you know, front up to their workplace rather than do it from their work office or interstate, they can actually turn up. That's mm -hmm. great. I'm, I I love not having some of the councillors here. So, a hybrid is perfect. Uh, Councillor Kerrow, you wish to speak? Uh, just briefly, I think the CEO addressed the point I was going to make, um, but I think, uh, with all respect to Councillor Sims, um, I think this is an unnecessary drain on administration's resources. Uh, we have the motion. Uh, it was very clearly specified as to why uh, uh, under which circumstance we were returning to Zoom. That's already spelled out. Uh, we uh, haven't had any uh, problems, as far as I can tell, with the functioning of uh, Zoom. Everything is operating in a very common sense way. Um, I don't think there is any need to uh, uh, drain uh, administration resources and force them to, uh, to, to go through the work, which um, I, don't, I just think is unnecessary. Okay. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak? Well, if we think about uh, uh, in this situation over COVID, etc., um, we are no longer making determinations or in, uh, in advising from uh, the committee meetings. So we are just getting together and garnering information and uh, in, in informing ourselves better. So when we come to the council meetings, which is today, which we have face to face, that we have the information. And I, I find it as well enough that uh, we are able to get the information we need. Um, because we're not voting, we're not we're not creating a, a particular advice. Uh, therefore, it, there's not the necessity, you know, or the argument that you really put that you have to be here so that we can do this. Because we are doing this once a, once a month, and we're doing it right now. And I think we are now interrogating what the the administration is putting in front of us, and we're talking to those uh, uh, those various uh, items rather than necessarily debating them. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Look, Lord Mayor, um, with all due respect to my colleagues, it's poppycock. The, the thrust of what is being proposed is that we have a set of rules that we all understand. And those include in the context of the Chief Executive now telling us that we will have a hybrid system in place. Um, we need to address the way in which people attend the meeting. 
And again, I point to the UNLI regulations, which distinguish between those who are present and those who are online, and those who are online and those who are on the telephone, which are permitted by the rules according to the UNLI Council. Now, it also deals with interruptions to online service. Uh, and so in circumstances where we had Councillor Kira recently there, but not heard, uh, there is a means of dealing with that uh, in such a way that his presence is recorded. Moreover, there is a precise format dealt with in the instructions that I have there for the recording of votes uh, in the minutes uh, and in other documentation. It makes absolute sense that we have understood rules. And if you have rules for meeting for face-to-face, -face, why would you not have rules for not meeting face-to-face? -face? It, it just makes absolute sense and it provides clarity for all of us. Um, I do urge members to not listen to Councillor Kira and Councillor Canol. Um, they do not know, they do not understand what they're saying about the need for them. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Sims to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. This is um, pretty straightforward. Um, I, I would be very concerned if we don't develop uh, guidelines to govern um, the use of uh, meetings conducted electronically. We need to deal with um, a range of issues, including how to manage confidential information and so on. I would have thought it would be very useful to have guidelines um, to provide advice to councillors um, on those matters. I'm not in favour of um, the shift to Zoom meetings. Um, I can't fathom why uh, members of this council seem so hell-bent on not being here or wanting to meet. Um, I've, you know, I put it in the same category as the monthly meeting regime um, and other initiatives which have had the effect of shutting down uh, debate and excluding the community from discussions. That's my big concern um, about the use of Zoom on this council is that members of the community are disenfranchised and they don't have the opportunity to come along face to face and um, watch their councils um, uh, councillors engaging in discussion on issues. I think that's a big shame. But um, at least if some guidelines are developed, um, then that would provide clarity to all of us. Um, so I urge members who supported um, this shift to Zoom to also come on board to add some flesh to the bones. Um, Councillor Kira put forward this um, vision piece um, a dream, if you will. I'm um, adding some uh, flesh to the bones so that it's clear how this may work in practice. Um, and so, you know, I encourage Councillor Cura um, and his supporters to come on board with this. Members to vote, those in favour? Those against? What is the problem? Division. That is lost. <coughs> Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. With all those in favour of the amendment, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor, mm, Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Uh, members, that means we go back to the original um, and uh, are there any other speakers? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, 10.8 is the Adelaide Parklands Authority annual report. I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Deputy Lord Mayor? Councillor Knoll. Members? Councillor Martin? Um, an excellent report. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, but on 3.34, there's uh, notation that the board supported a motion on notice that the Adelaide Parklands Authority writes to the Minister for Planning to provide a response to the initiative room recommended that the Adelaide Parklands squares and city layout be considered for state heritage. But it doesn't say what the response was. Can you recall? Uh, yes, we were briefed on that only a week ago and the response has that it has been included. It has been yes, included? Yes, that was presented to all members a week ago, that the squares have been included as parklands. Okay, is that a good thing or a bad thing in the it's planning context? Thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> good, good, okay. Um, and look, uh, one other matter. Um, I, I, uh, before I um, uh, just make a brief comment, 
Um, I note in a later part of the evening, there's discussion of this matter, but um, have you or, um, no, no, I'll leave it to the confidential part. I don't want to go there, Sorry. I won't go there. Thank you. That's All fine. right, um, and just uh, finally, um, I, uh, I noted that the, uh, the chapter in relation to the Adelaide Crows takeover of Park 2 ends in the air and uh, sadly the sequel has happened today with the uh, former Premier uh, saying he wants to uh, get back to the uh, Crows proposal in the city somewhere anyway. Um, I do want to say however uh, or send a bouquet to the uh, authority um, in respect of their report in relation to the Adelaide 500 and I note uh, that the board um, has asked that the following matters be addressed, that is information in relation to risk management for the protection of native grass and habitat for the Superloop 500, confirmation sought in relation to the allocation of monies for extra contractors to reduce time, a cost benefit analysis and data in relation to benefits and loss to the city. Um, I think that's sensational and um, I'm really pleased that uh, Apple is on to that. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, if not, back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Summer. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, members, 10.9 is the uh, election of board members for the Australia Day Council of South Australia. Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Uh, Lord Mayor, I would just like to flag that I do have a perceived conflict of interest as I am an existing board member and I've also put my hand up to be uh, uh, re-elected on the board. Um, I will uh, stay for the discussion and vote. Thank you. Uh, members, uh, we are looking for four nominees. I can take the nominations from the floor and then we can vote. Uh, so members, I'll ask for nominations from the floor, please. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to nominate uh, Arman Abraham today, OAM, Bruce Dejite, Sarah Anichiriku, and Mustafa Kadir. Thank you. Uh, I will just ask Councillor Abrahams today if you accept the nomination. Yes, I will. Thank you. Um, members, are there any other nominations? Councillor Martin? Um, yes, I'd like to nominate. Um, uh, did you nominate Mr. Kadir? You did, didn't you? Did. Yep, yep, okay. Uh, Mr. Hashmi, uh, Ms. Mr. Wagley, and uh, Mr. Mangles. Okay. Members, there have been seven nominations. Are there any other nominations? That means we go to a ballot. Council members, just a reminder to select four names from the following names available. Councillor Abraham, Abraham today, Bruce Jite, sorry if I pronounce these names wrong, Sarah Anik, Anikaraku, how do I even go there? Mustafa Kadir, Efan Hashmi, Ash, Ashish Wagley and Arthur Mangos. Thank you. Is it first past the post for four or is it preferential? Uh, it must be for four. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just thought I was going to do that.
So, members, uh, the successful nominations are Mr. Bruce Chitte. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Abraham today, Miss Sarah Anacharyo. Oh My apologies, and uh, Mustafa Kadir, Mr. Mustafa Kadir. Thank you. Now, um, I think I need a motion to accept those four. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a second. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Any discussion? If not, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. 10.10 uh, .10 is the Dog and Cat Management Board. Deputy Lord Mayor. Wish to nominate Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, do you accept the nomination? Having nominated myself for 25 years and been rejected every 25 years, I was hopeful this time, but as you know, I am unavailable until quarter to five on weekdays now, so I'll have to turn down the nomination. Oh, Thank you. Oh. Councillor Moran. I know. Um, uh, members, I look for a nomination. Councillor Sims. Nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? <laughs> I nominate. Councillor Kira. Councillor Kira, accept the nomination. Members, are there any other nominations? I can actually take two. Councillor. I'd, I'd, Council, I'd nominate Councillor Donovan. Councillor Donovan, would you like to do dog and cat management? Thank you kindly, given my new gorgeous puppy, but no, I will decline. It's all yours, Jess. Members, any other nominations? If not, I'll look for a motion, please, to, oh, first of all, 
Um, my apologies. First of all, for the procedural, if I can have a move and a second for the um, procedural. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Thank you to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. And then the nomination. So I have Councillor Kira. I need a motion, please, to accept the nomination of Councillor Kira. Councillor Abraham, today. And a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, any discussion? If not, oh, just one moment. Um, Councillor Kira, uh, you do actually, because it's a paid position, it's a material conflict of interest, so I just need you to. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, those in favour of Councillor Kira? Those against? Uh, that is carried. Thank you. If we could let Councillor. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Donovan. Uh, members, 10.11 uh, is the election of the LGA president. Um, we need one nomination from the floor, if possible. Uh, I do, thank you, Council. Um, so if I could actually uh, have someone move the procedural, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a second, thank you, Councillor Martin. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Uh, now I do need a nomination from the floor. Councillor Donovan. Uh, I nominate Mayor Karen Redman. Karen Redman, thank you. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Councillor Martin. Uh, um, no, I'm not sure which one is standing for Parliament, Karen Redman or Angela Evans in daily reports standing in Barossa. No, I haven't read it. I think it's. I'm not a mayor. Can Councillor um, Mayor Redman is the chair of Garrick, so currently. Okay, well, I'm confused now. Okay, members, uh, we have a nomination for Ka Mayor Karen Redman. Um, if I could have a motion to move. Thank you, Councillor Donovan, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, Twelve point no ten point twelve is the twenty twenty LGA annual general meeting papers. If I could, someone move that we note the report. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Second, to Councillor Kuros. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Okay. Councillor Kuros, members, Deputy Lord Mayor, to sum up. Okay. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Uh, ten point thirteen is the local government finance authority board election and annual general meeting. Um, I will actually move the uh, procedural first, which is noting and also approving the nomination. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Second, to Council Canal. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. I will then ask for nomination, Council Cross. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd just like to declare that on my conflict of uh, interest, um, I have an actual conflict and will be vacated in the chamber. Thank you very much, Councillor. Sorry, uh, we'll leave that because she's nominated. Because she's oh, nominated. Sorry. Is this a, a case? Not a paper. It's a paper. Oh. <coughs> Members, uh, I will look for up to two nominations for the board. Deputy Lord Mayor. <coughs> Uh, I nominate Councillor Kouros and Mr. Michael Sedgman. Thank you. Members, Councillor Martin. Just for the sake of having somebody else in there, um, I nominate Mr. Rabbit and Mr. Field, Field and Rabbit. Certainly, Councillor Moran. Uh, I will nominate uh, Karen Hockley and Annette Martin. And sorry, who was the second one? Annette Martin. Yeah. Thank you. Any other nominations? 
Members, we will go to the ballot. Thank you. We have got uh, six nominations for two positions. So if you can just mark two on your ballot paper, please. Members, uh, the successful ballot is for Councillor Kouros and Michael Sedgman. If I could have someone move. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. And a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Mackey, Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Donovan. Thank you. If we could let Councillor Kouros know, she can come back in. Our members, uh, 10.14 is the South Australian Heritage Council. Uh, again, I need a procedural. If I could move, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, second of Councillor Knoll. Our members to vote, those in favour, those in favour, uh, those against, uh, that is carried. Um, and again, I am looking for up to two nominations for the uh, board. Deputy Lord Mayor. I wish to nominate Councillor Kira. Councillor Kira, do you accept the nomination? I accept. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to nominate Councillor Moran, if she accept. Councillor Moran. Are there any other nominations? No? Then we have two nominations, which means I just need Councillor Sims. Just wondering, Lord Mayor, if we could get um, the councillors to uh, speak to their nominations. Um, I'd just be interested to know what their visions are for um, heritage and their experience, given that it should be a merit-based process. 
that, that's not usual. I'm sorry, that's not generally what we would do. There'd be information that. Well, we're nominated off the floor. It doesn't mean that, you know, obviously it goes and it will go through a selection process with the Heritage Council. So it doesn't mean that you go straight on to the Heritage Council. I mean, I know who's going to get it because she's in Team but... No, no, there's two of them, Councillor Moran. Two are going forward. So would you like to take... If, if we can actually, one, members, um, if I could, there were two two nominations. We have two nominations, Councillor Kira and Councillor Moran. Um, you will actually have to uh, uh, tell us your conflict of interest and leave the room. <coughs> because it's a paid position, it's an actual conflict of interest. It's based on actual conflict of interest. Yeah. Actual well, conflict of interest. Just, just for clarity, Lord Mayor, I think I made the same mistake Councillor Moran did. The recommendation says it approves the nomination of a council member or staff member to the South Australian Heritage Council. Correct. The comment, the comment talks about up to two, but the recommendation was approves the nomination of a, so what do we, what do we go by? Um, correct, I actually read it the same way and then I was told it's a maximum of two. We can nominate up to but two. But the, the motion itself says A. That's how I read it, that's why I put my hand up. I will go to the CEO. I tend to go straight to the motions, not executive summaries. Just to confirm it, the, the, obviously the recommendation is incorrect. It is up to two. Okay, that's but that's, that's not the recommendation I moved. That's not what's on the screen. That's not what's in the papers. That's not what I moved. I moved that we appoint two. Oh, no, you can't now, it's done. You can't go backwards. Just for a moment. Um, Sorry, that's in, just We did I'm... the same at 10.10, .10, where it's approved the nomination of a council member or staff member. That is the substantive. Um, we can nominate up to two. So um, the, the approval is to nominate a council member. We can move up to two. So uh, with those two, I will then ask for someone to move the motion from the floor. Councillor Sims and the seconder. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, members, I just have a question. What if this motion fails? What do you do then? Then we don't put forward a nomination. Anyone? Yeah, okay. Uh, members to the floor, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Lord Mayor, can I request these are drafted more clearly in future? It seems that you, myself, Councillor Moran, all made the same. I did, I, I did actually read it as one, as yeah. in a well, singular a, council there's member. There's no yeah. two, there's no multiples anywhere yeah. in that sentence. Yeah. So it's very sloppy. Uh, members, we have got four items uh, in confidence this evening, um, after which we will have a break. Uh, so, councillors, there are four um, Present for a request for consideration and confidence. Each item, of course, I need a motion decision to order the exclusion of the public to enable consideration and confidence. So we're looking for a mover and a seconder for 12.1.1 uh, recommendations, advice of the audit committee and confidence. I have Councillor Abraham today and seconded Councillor Knoll. Members? I have not to move to sum up. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? Um, I will look for a move and seconder for item 12.2.1, which is the renewal of recycled water service uh, water of contract. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Knoll. Members, if there any debate, Councillor Martin. Uh, a question of the administration. Um, I can't say anything confidential about this. Is it because it's a government department that we automatically uh, apply a, um, a confidentiality order to it? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, this matter requires, it relates to contract negotiations and therefore it needs to be confidential. 
Yeah, but it's a rate cut. Uh, uh, you know, you buy so many, you know, litres and you pay so much. That's the deal. Through well, I mean, there are aspects of the of the negotiation that require confidentiality. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you. To the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. I look for a move and a second for 12.2.2, which is initiating the representation review. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, did anyone wish to speak to the motion? Yes, I do, Lord Mayor. Look, this is a perfect illustration of uh, this obsession we have with secrecy in this place. Um, this initiating the representation review is not confidential. Uh, we've all discussed it. We know it's going on. Uh, this appoints somebody who uh, will take on that role. And if you take out pages 405 and 406, there's no problem. If 405 and 406 had not been included, this is a matter that could be in the public realm. And this is exactly the sort of thing that I've mentioned time and time again. Why can we not just publish that information that can be in the public realm and the confidential bit can be either in another part of the meeting or provided separately? But there's nothing confidential about the, uh, the body of the recommendation that I can see. Yeah, three of them. Point taken. However, um, there would be matters that will need to be discussed in confidence, and that's why we need to raise this matter in confidence. Uh, members, if not, back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And for item 12.2.3, which is the Adelaide Parklands Authority membership appointments, I'll look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Kerr, Deputy Lord Mayor, oh, did you wish to speak? Anybody like to speak? Thank you, Councillor Martin, then Councillor Sims. Oh, look, same issue, Lord Mayor. Um, this is a, a, a matter related to the appointment of board members to the Adelaide Parklands Authority. This is a public body, uh, one I know that requires ministerial approval of the names that go forward but for reasons that I cannot disclose because there is a secrecy covering this, um, uh, it, it, it really can be in the public. There's absolutely no reason why this matter needs to be private and confidential. Uh, and I could tell you exactly why, but I'm prevented from doing so because to actually tell you why would be a breach of the confidentiality order. But it's just, again, unnecessary secrecy. We should have it out in the open. It, it lends confidence to our processes if people can see who we're appointing and why we're appointing. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I also want to put on record my concern about this being uh, conducted um, in confidence and behind closed doors. I don't think it's appropriate. Thank you. Uh, members, if not, back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, so members, that takes us to item 12.1.1, uh, uh, which is the advice recommendations of the audit.
No, Councillor Moran, yes. I'm joining us momentarily, but I might get started with the Lord Mayor's report. Um, so, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, last week we unveiled the portrait of former Lord Mayor Wendy Chapman AM, which is there hanging in the above the public gallery. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, Wendy was elected Lord Mayor of Adelaide in 1983, making history as the first woman to hold the position in any Australian capital city. She also served as the City of Adelaide as a councillor from 1977 and represented the City of Adelaide on the Adelaide Convention Bureau Board of Directors, the Local Government Association of South Australia, and served on the Jubilee 150 Board. She was awarded a member of the Order of Australia in 1986 for service to local government and the community. Last year marked the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage in South Australia, and in recognition of the significance of this occasion, Council voted to celebrate the women who have made a significant and unique contribution to our city by commissioning a series of portraits to hang in the Council Chamber. And the portrait of Wendy is the first such painting to be completed. So um, hopefully she'll come and join us and see it in the chamber soon. <coughs> Over the past month, I attended the Main Street Association AGM, the North Adelaide Precinct AGM, and hosted a Melbourne Street Roundtable. During these meetings, we spoke with business owners about how council is hoping to support them to recover from COVID-19, and these include the Outdoor Activation Grants Christmas Incentive Scheme and Recover and Imagine. Um, although many people have returned to offices uh, in the CBD in North Adelaide, we're still not back to pre-COVID levels and there are large numbers of people still working from home and that can be felt all across the city. I think at last count we're up to 61, possibly 62% of workers back in the city. The need to curate unique experiences in collaboration with our businesses on main streets and precincts to attract visitors and residents is more important than ever. This month, um, I also toured the Adelaide Botanic High School and met with Principal Alastair Brown, students and staff. Um, I also had student leaders from the Christian Brothers College uh, who visited the town hall to discuss climate change and the actions the city of Adelaide is taking to become a, one of the first carbon neutral cities. I also attended the launches of the Adelaide Film Festival and the Feast Festival. My Lord Mayor's, <coughs> excuse me, Open doors, uh, which are meetings with members of the community, have restarted after having been put on hold during COVID-19. Um, I gave an address as chair of the Triple CLM, the Capital City Council of Lord Mayors, on um, homeless and our strategies for housing and homelessness at a West Australian Lord Mayoral Candidates Forum. There are also uh, been several events focused on city wellbeing this month and I spoke about the how the City of Adelaide is leading the way in measuring and developing strategies to support wellbeing and resilience of communities. And this work is being done in partnership with institutions such as the South Australian Health and Medical Research Institute, the SAMRI, and this follows on from the report from Professor Pawlowski. This month is Walktober, and on Sunday, I attended the launch of Adelaide 100. It's the first uh, seven kilometres of working, walking trail, which is around the River Torrens, Karawir Piri, and is now open. And it was a fantastic day with, I think, about 600 walkers there, um, and was just a beautiful way to uh, uh, walk around the River Torrens, and I encourage you all to do that. Could I have someone move that the report be accepted? Thank you, Councillor Kerr, second to Councillor Abraham today. Members to the vote, those in favour? That's against, thank you, that's carried. Um, members, item 14.1 on the uh, agenda tonight is the council, councillor's reports or reports from council members. Um, I'll look for someone to move the report be noted. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and Seconder, Councillor Knoll. Members, did anyone want to speak to the report? No, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Good Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, <laughs> that is carried. Uh, members, we have several questions on notice this evening, um, uh, which have all been distributed uh, on <coughs> through our website. Um, I'll look to the room to have the questions, uh, the asked questions taken as read um, by a show of hands, members. Those in favour, thank you, members. 
Um, and of course, copies of those members can be supplied to the public through our website, should they want. Um, questions without notice. Councillor Sims. Thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. In light of uh, media reports today that the new chair of uh, the Crows, John Olson, is uh, looking at a location for um, the Crows in the CBD, I'd like to ask administration through you, Lord Mayor, whether they have had any uh, contact with the Crows um, about potential locations. CEO. Through Lord Mayor, no is the answer. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, that question unfortunately won't appear on the minutes, Councillor Sims. Right. As um, okay, um, Councillor Martin, you had a question without notice. Yes, I have two uh, questions without notice, Lord Mayor, and they are seeking clarification of uh, responses to questions on notice. In the first instance, in response uh, to my question to the administration asking. Uh, about contact with the Stadium Management Authority over the CLMP for Park 26. The administration replied it's been negotiating or speaking with the Stadium Management Authority for the past three years. But it also notes that through the revision of the CLMP, it was determined by the administration that it's not unreasonable and is in line with the use of the land to have some adjacent seating to the sporting oval in support of a 100 seat grandstand. Could the administration tell us on what basis they determined it's reasonable and in line with the use of the land to create a grandstand where there was none? See you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Clinton, can you help with this, please? Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Council approved the Adelaide Oval Landscape Design on the 31st of July 2012, and, and in that, um, there was provision for two modules of the Clem Hill stand um, positioned on the edge of Adelaide Oval number two. Um, through the revision of the CLMP, it was determined that this is not unreasonable and is in line with the use of the land to have some seating adjacent to the sporting noble. So that's that's what was allowed for. No, I understand that. But what was the basis for it to be reasonable and in line? Uh, there must be some criteria somewhere. Uh, through Lord Mayor, um, I'm not aware of the, the actual reasoning. I can follow that up for you and take an undertaking to Touch us that down. Yes, look, that would be great. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, and Lord Mayor, uh, the other question relates to the travel budget um, uh, for your uh, travel to uh, New Zealand. I asked the administration directly uh, to advise how many people, including the Lord Mayor, travelled to New Zealand in October 2019. The response isn't direct. It says, that the Lord Mayor and two staff visited from visited Christchurch from the 20 to the 22nd of November 2019. The Lord Mayor and two staff visited Wellington and Auckland from 24, 26 November 2019. Does that mean four, five or more people were involved in travel? I think the answer was quite clear. There were two staff that joined me in Christchurch and two staff that joined me in Wellington and Auckland. So that's five different staff, or four different staff joining you? Uh, I believe so, and that's in the report attached. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't say that. Oh, I asked directly how many people, including the Lord Mayor, travelled to New Zealand, and it says Lord Mayor and two staff, Lord Mayor and two staff. Um, so the answer is five. There is myself and four staff, <coughs> two that went to Christchurch and two that went to Wellington, Auckland. So I, I am correct in saying five, that's right. Thank you. Members, if there are no other questions on notice, we will then go to item 17, which is 17.1. Uh, Councillor Martin, motion on notice, disability, a disabled parking in residential permit signs. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Sims. Okay, uh, look, Lord Mayor, this is very straightforward. Um, I'm asking for a report, just a report, to see if there's anything we can do to assist people with disabilities who visit the City of Adelaide. 
uh, business and residents and who need to park close to a location uh, but where there are no disabled parking spaces. Now, it arose because a uh, well-known resident was visited by uh, his parents, distinguished South Australians who held high office and gave great uh, community service. Uh, one of the parents has a disability and a disability permit, but in that street, there were no disabled or timed parking spaces available close to where the individual needed to get out of the vehicle. So uh, the resident's a family member parked the car in a permit zone while she took that uh, family member indoors and returned to find a parking ticket issued by the City of Adelaide uh, on the car windscreen. Um, now look, I, I sympathise um, uh, with uh, residents who have uh, issues in depositing uh, passengers from vehicles where they're aged or they have a disability. I have the same uh, situation arise with my elderly parent on occasions. Now, on this occasion, in a conversation with the resident, um, we discussed whether or not um, it would be a good idea to see if there is any way around this so that, uh, in the uh, uh, words of the, uh, the resident, we could look at permit zones being available to disabled people where there are no disabled parking <laughs> opportunities. Now, subsequently, another ratepayer, also uh, well known to this council, um, uh, said to me, uh, look, that's not a bad idea and something perhaps that uh, Council could put before the Access and Disability, uh, sorry, Access and Inclusion Committee. Now, um, the issue arises because in the city, as we know from the administration's comments, we have 163 disability parking spaces, but 500 streets. So that means we actually have uh, three times as many streets in the city of Adelaide than we have disability parking spaces. Um, I read in the, uh, the commentary the administration has identified legislative impediments um, for which it's proposed to take advice in regard to using uh, um, resident permit zones in this way. But I think, uh, and I say to members, um, it is important for people with dis disabilities, we owe it to them to at least ask the question about whether or not it is possible for us to do something to assist them. Um, now, I I'm very open-minded about this. I don't have a particular view on this, but I do believe that it is worth, on the basis of the conversations that I've had, uh, to ask the question and I'm quite prepared for the administration to come back and say, no, this is not possible, or here are some other alternatives. Uh, and of course, I would also ask the administration to consult our uh, access and inclusion committee if that is possible. Um, and I'd ask members to uh, to support this. Councillor Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Thank you, sir. Okay, members. Councillor Cruz. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just uh, want to say that I actually met uh, the resident that uh, Councillor Martin is um, talking about, and uh, he is uh, concerned that uh, with his elderly parents coming to visit him who have a disabled um, a, a disabled parking uh, on their car that they can't park somewhere closer to the where they live when they come and visit um, when they come and visit him. So I understand his concerns and I get that this is a report. Um, he was a bit taken back with the comment because um, from administration in regards to there being 22,000 disability permits and only 781 residential permits in operation, he uh, was a bit concerned on how all of that would work. But since it's a report, he, um, he we, we concluded that it's the best way forward to see if we can come up with an issue. I'm glad that uh, Councillor Martin said he's open-minded um, because we have to take a lot of things into account when we um, go down this road because we don't want to obviously congest the parking permits, residential parking permit area with you know, or disabled parking. So there needs to be a balance and I'm sure administration will be able to provide comments in regards to finding that balance. Um, but it is something that is um, 
very uh, clear that we need to support um, you know, this more disabled parking um, and the ability to do so, but how is the question? So there's uh, a lot of work probably to come with this. Um, I understand that. Um, so I look forward to seeing the report. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Members, if not, I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, thank you, members. That takes us to 17.2. Councillor Moran. Multiple pro, 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 pyrotechnics displays. Um, I move that the council uh, cancels its multiple pyrotechnic displays as part of the hybrid visual entertainment at midnight on New Year's Eve, in line with most, if not all, capital cities and regional centres. Members, I look for a seconder. Councillor Martin. Well, I think it's fairly self-explanatory, really. Uh, we're not having it on the bridge. We're having it in unidentified positions scattered around the city council area, so unidentified that the, count, the administration can't even trust the councillors telling us where they are. Um, I think that's um, unacceptable. Uh, the midnight one's too late for children, and let's face it, uh, only really the children um, get a buzz out of the, out of the crackers. So I think in line with all other sophisticated cities, right at the height of our fire season, we just skip this rather meaningless um, thing. Some people said, oh, but what can you do at midnight? I mean, if really, if you're relying on a buzz from a few crackers in unidentified locations, your life really is in the clapper, isn't it? Um, so I'd say just get over it. I know Jesse will get up and say that, you know, the hill's hoist and let's go back to pies and pasties and sausage rolls and all the things that Peter Gurr so beautifully describes and that I'm just killing Christianity and God and the family. But really, let's just skip it this year. <laughs> Councillor Martin. <I> <laughs> Members and Debbie Lawman. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, we had Dr. Zeus's bridge who stole Christmas, but apparently now we're going to have the councillor who steals New Year's Eve. Um, uh, there are people looking forward to this, and, and to say that, to say that if you if you're looking forward to a few crackers on New Year's Eve, your life's in the clapper. I mean, that's incredibly disrespectful to everyone who's had such a wretched year in 2020, such an awful year. Um, in 2020 and if I'm recalling correctly in Back to the Future um, the, the line is used whatever you do don't go to, to back to 2020 and I think that that holds true and, and that's why it's incumbent on us to put on a show for people so that there is still some semblance, some semblance of celebration um, uh, and in particular to welcome 2021 which I sincerely hope will be a far better year um, for our community in the city of Adelaide uh, and globally as well so I would encourage members not to support uh, this motion, which in essence is a do-nothing motion. Um, uh, it is the worst sort of motion that comes to council um, uh, to see that we cancel things or don't do things, which the community by and large supports. So um, I hope this motion gets voted down. Members, Councillor Kerr. Uh, Lord Mayor, I just recall uh, being on uh, Gurdjie Street during New Year's Eve uh, a few years ago, not, not too many years ago. Um, restaurants stayed open. Uh, till, till midnight, specifically because uh, there were fireworks. And uh, when sitting outside at a restaurant on Gurdjie Street, I observed uh, people uh, suddenly standing up and, and, and a, wave, a wave of shared uh, joy uh, uh, just, just spontaneously occurred when the sound of the first fireworks uh, erupted. Um, I think it would be terribly sad if there's no space for joy left uh, in our own cold hearts. Let's not uh, export that coldness to the rest of the city. Let's perhaps keep it to ourselves uh, and save it for a hot summer nights to yes. chill the rest of our families with. Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Abraham today. Can we keep the comments to the motion, please, members? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, can I uh, ask a quick question of administration? So, what is the reason behind uh, not informing us of the of the locations of the fireworks? CEO. Sure. Through Lord Mayor, Claire, can you respond?
Um, as part of our um, COVID site plan that we're working through with Health SA, uh, one of the really important elements that they've asked us to really consider carefully is the possibility of mass gatherings. Um, given that we're not going ahead with the Elder Park component, um, we decided to um, build on the success of the winter work and the um, recovery programming that we've undertaken in the last few months where we disaggregate our um, events and activities across the city. Um, so um, in terms of um, any public notification um, in relation to the fireworks, it would require um, approval from SA Health um, and we'd need to be able to then rework the plan um, to assure them that um, that would not enable any mass gatherings to happen. Okay, thank you. So um, I, I think that speaks for itself. We're, uh, we're doing something <laughs> fun. We're doing something great. We are. We're doing it in a safe way. We are, we are doing it in a, in a safe way. Um, and I would just like to use this opportunity, Lord Mayor, to remind members of a small video that was presented to us via our papers of what this uh, uh, hybrid model could look like. Now, I don't know about uh, other members, but I definitely had a look at that, uh, and I was impressed by what was presented. So if we do get something that was uh, similar to uh, what was uh, presented to us uh, um, during that committee, I'm uh, very much looking forward to it. Um, before I finish off, Lord Mayor, I would just like to touch on one aspect of this motion, and that is uh, the, the part that says, in line with most, if not all, capital cities and regional centres. I don't think that is right uh, because so far uh, Hobart Council are uh, still going ahead with their fireworks, Perth Council are going ahead with the fireworks, uh, Melbourne is going ahead with them, uh, and Sydney, yes, yeah, Sydney are going ahead and if anything, the Premier of New South Wales came out and said, no, we will go ahead because those fireworks are a symbol of hope. <coughs> In the years that we've had, yeah, it is a symbol of hope. Yeah, yeah. It is that a is symbol of hope. Let's see it. Sorry, Councillor. Sydney is not having them in Sydney. Sydney, Sydney is muted. Sorry, Councillor. Councillor. Councillor Abraham today is speaking. Sydney is actually going ahead. No, and if we can let Councillor Abraham finish, please. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. So Sydney are going ahead with the fireworks and. That, that comment, the symbol of hope, the year that we've just had, we've gone through a pandemic, let's celebrate by looking at this hybrid firework, laser show, whatever it ends up being. As I said, um, what, what was presented to us in committee was very exciting and I urge members to go back and look at it because it will be a show not to be missed. The members, Councillor Martin and Councillor Knoll. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Um, it will be a show that will be missed. It is five minutes, five minutes of crackers. And to top it off, we're not even going to tell people where they are. So all over Adelaide, people will be running from the back to the front of the house saying, is it out there? Is it out there? Where is it? For God's sakes. By which time, Lord Mayor, the five minutes will have expired. Now, look, Lord Mayor, I, I can't imagine anything worse than secret fireworks. It is in keeping with our general approach. Our general approach to matters in this council is to keep things confidential. This may well be. I might observe, though, that quite seriously, the motion that's been put forward is being misrepresented. It is not a do-nothing motion, as the Lord Mayor misleads everybody in saying. Councillor Moran is saying, let's have a light show. It was something that was supported by uh, the Deputy exactly. Lord Mayor at some stage. In fact, he stole the idea, Councillor Moran thinks, from her. I'm not going to enter that debate. <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, it is a misrepresentation to say that nothing is proposed. And moreover, I'm just delighted that Councillor Kieran will do fireworks from Elder Park in Gooja Street. I mean, he must have been on a very large ladder. But look, I'm not one to oppose gilding the lily, Lord Mayor. It's something that Thank I enjoy you, doing. Um, but I, I do take exception to uh, uh, the misreading of the papers. The uh, administration has made clear that uh, Brisbane, Melbourne and Perth have not formed a public position on their fireworks. And it is incumbent on this council at this time to think carefully about what it does in terms of celebrating the new year. Um, 
Uh, I have said many times it is not appropriate in the middle of a fire season, even if it is a secret fireworks show and no one can see them or know where they are, it is not an appropriate thing to be letting off fires all over the city on uh, an occasion that is likely to be a high fire danger day. Now, I'm not going to remind you about last year, Lord Mayor. Um, <laughs> Oh, I will. <laughs> I will. We set fire to the riverbank last year, and it could happen easily again this year. Um, let's just substitute that for something innovative, something very 21st century, not something 19th century of the kind that Councillor Kira likes. Um, we are, after all, a city that has a reputation, or used to have, a reputation for innovation. Uh, let's leave the 19th century behind. Uh, and let's celebrate our city and innovation with lights and not fires. Councillor Connell, would you wish to speak? I might as well. Um, I mean, this year has been obviously very, uh, uh, very difficult, and uh, particularly commercially, etc. And if we think about this, our city needs all the help it can get. So uh, to celebrate New Year's with the sound of crickets is certainly not an, an interesting idea. We need to activate the city. We need to do it intelligently. So if we're going to take this opportunity to at least celebrate, because don't forget, midnight, no matter how uh, you, know, you celebrate, that is the time people are looking towards. And we're able to now do something different. A light show, if we remember the light show needs generally surfaces and that to uh, shine up against, etc. you're very limited. This is an opportunity now to activate the whole city by doing it in different ways. And I personally don't have to know where the fireworks are because I want to see them, not be in them. Um, <laughs> so I would like to be able to have uh, the businesses around Adelaide uh, be able to take advantage of it for the first time, rather than us being a, 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 a social good, bringing people together and celebrating in, in the Elder uh, Park, but bring it out to the various components of the city. From wherever you're going to do it, I would like to be surprised. Um, <laughs> but, you can even walk a bit, so you won't see it. But when I'm in the city, because I'm celebrating here, because this is where I want to be, I mean, I, I, you, can all, you can stay within your houses and leave the doors closed and certainly draw the curtains, because I suppose that's a way. But the simple fact is, is that this now we can use this as an opportunity. We can use it to enliven the rest of the city, uh, start to uh, enable businesses to think about the new year and also uh, about an opportunity. And we want to bring people back. And if we do not, as leaders of the greater uh, Adelaide, you know, greater metropolitan area, start to think of ways to make our city that uh, the relevance, etc., and reconnect uh, with people, this is just one of those ways for us to show the leadership to be that that uh, uh, council and that area where people come to celebrate because I mean the last thing we want to do is that for them uh, you know there's enough other opportunities and I think it's critical that we, we uh, think of ourselves as the centerpiece of the city. Thank you members. Councillor Sorry Lord Mayor. I just feel like it's Groundhog Day we just talk about the same thing over and over again but I just want to point out that this is we are a capital city and uh, we are here to support the four five thousand or four to five thousand businesses that are in the city and they look forward to this event people uh, open up their uh, restaurant particularly or hospitality business particularly for this event and like um, Councillor Kira said if they're dining on Guja Street they'll end up walking to Elder Park as they have done in the past um, yes, it is challenging. It is challenging at the moment with COVID and we're going to have secret locations, but we're doing the best that we possibly can in light of the current circumstances. And that's what we are doing as a capital city. In light of the circumstances, doing the best we possibly can to be able to give back to our ratepayers who rely on us to activating the city and bringing life to the city. This is not about your personal views. If you're offended about it because of the fires, then that, that is your choice. But I have not received not one email from anyone that has been affected by the fires telling me that they do not want these fireworks to go ahead. Not yeah. one person yeah. has yeah. emailed yeah. me to tell me they are offended about. I've only heard Councillor Martin and Councillor Rath on repeat telling me about the offence to the fires and the little, little, little mishap that happened last year was quickly sorted out by the Metropolitan Fire Department. And honestly, it is an event that is for our city, as a capital city, to activate our city, get over it.
<laughs> Members, and I will just uh, um, remind you all that Jan Claire Wisdom, who is the um, Adelaide Hills Mayor, joined me on stage for New Year's last year to thank everybody for being there and to celebrate and the support of those that had gone through the bushfires. I will go to Councillor Moran to sum up. Yes. Uh, uh, Councillor Cora said that the MFS sorted out. In actual fact, the MFS didn't have to do anything. Oh. It was it was it was taken care of by uh, the by contractors that we employ. Yep. yep. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Well, I've never seen Team Adelaide in such fine intellectual form. Um, if you really need five minutes of crackers in indeterminate positions, not an Elder Park. Um, Councillor Kuros, we don't want them to all walk down on mass to Elder Park. They'll be dotted through the residential streets. I'll just give a hint to the public, they'll be down at the Torrens uh, because I, that's the only I'm sorry, I, I will, sorry, Councillor Moran, they're not going to be dotted around residential streets. They're not going to be dotted around. They're going to be down at Elder Park and that's where everybody's going to go because it's the only safe place. I was being ironic, Lord Mayor. Um, old fashioned crackers, is that your idea of joy? Uh, and if you don't have your four minutes of crackers, then you're just a loser listening to the cricket. Cricket, I thought that was actually quite a nice idea, cricket, but I guess they meant crickets. Um, I can assure you that most people have a lot of fun on New Year's Eve, watching concerts, um, partying at home, doing the COVID safe party thing. If you um, need to come over from Gilberton to uh, try and find out where the little patch of crackers are, well then you've got a pretty funny idea of joy. Our, re our residents and our business people don't want us to waste money on this rubbish. They want us to give them rent relief and give them lit streets and give them clean streets. Our streets are filthy. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Please speak to the motion. Well, the motion is what else we could be spending the money no, on? No, it's not. The motion is whether we're cancelling well, It's funny how when I speak slightly off the motion, I get pulled over, but you let your deputy seem to be ex deputy oh, hope say anything you damn well like. It's, it's very unfair. I think the money could be better spent. Pyrotechnics are very expensive. <coughs> this will not work. It's a bit like our, I think, Mary's idea of having bugglers on the corner at um, Anzac Day. I never quite knew what they were, um, but so that didn't work either. <laughs> so um, I suggest that we stop this old fashioned, silly idea and get some. The burglars on the corner, I don't think they really got that. <laughs> <laughs> Buglers, Mary, buglers. Oh, I think that was Entertainment 101. Members, could we please go to the vote? Those in favour? The division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. <laughs> Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. Thank you. Thank you, members. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let us get back to business. Can, uh, number 17.3, uh, motion on notice, Councillor Moran, revocation decision of the 11th of August. Um, I move that the oh, well, as, as printed, I can't remember it being called driver's yes, support well, Thank package. you. Councillor Sims is seconding you. Um, yes, I urge you to, um, this has been a universally panned idea. It's silly. Um, members of Team Adelaide have gone to the media and said they didn't really understand the motion. It was very confusing. Uh, they didn't know what it was. Uh, a lottery prize in the form of a $100 gift voucher given weekly to a random user of the park. <laughs> well, that's really going to get me in. You know what we could actually do if we wanted to fill up our car parts, which are only 75% full at uh, the optimum time, is to actually drop our, um, our fees in the car park. Uh, nothing, a, a, do, a, a meat tray worth a hundred bucks uh, out of 20,000 people coming to the city a day is not going to get into the city. There are much better ways to attract people to the city than stupid ideas like this. As I said in the public, this has to be the, I've seen some pretty stupid ideas over the, over the years and this really takes the cake. I remember going to Perth once 25 years ago and I had a big sign saying, 
your car is as welcome as you. Now, I'm a car person, I drive in, I'm happy to drive a car, and I remember that was universally laughed at by at the uh, advertiser. It's a silly idea, it doesn't help. We must encourage everybody, car, bike, public transport, etc. And even if you wanted to, say I was a car fanatic and I really wanted to get rid of all the bike tracks, get rid of all the pedestrians, get rid of the public transport, I really wanted everybody to come into their comfy car, which is what I do. Um, this would not be what I put up. The problem with car parking in the city is the perceived price of our car parks, uh, the overzealous nature of our parking inspectors, perceptually, um, and the fact that we've never persisted insisting that the government let us pick our parking fine fee. Unfortunately, the government changed to one for Labor and Liberal just as we got some traction with that. The car parking fines in our streets are ridiculous and that's what puts 99% of people that don't drive their car in because they get a whacking great fine if they're five minutes over and then it triples every week. So this will do nothing. It makes us a laughing stock. Just get rid of it. You know, team members, that you've followed somebody down the rabbit hole this time. He's not even a member of your team. Councillor Sims. So, members, would anybody else like to speak? If not, I'll go back to the movers. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor. And look, may I just compliment the team on the strategy of not speaking to discourage speaking? It works a treat. Um, Lord Mayor, this this was a cracker of an idea. Um, it, I have never seen such publicity around uh, this council when Councillor Kira, uh, with the support of the Deputy Lord Mayor, who called Councillor Kira his spirit animal, uh, with, with the assistance of the spirit animal, he proposed encouraging more cars to the city. And with one motion, this city was catapulted into the national and international media. Oh. We we were on every headline. Scornful though they were, scornful though they were, we were in every headline. I don't think we've had so much publicity in such a long time. Which is all it was. Uh, or bad publicity for that matter. Um, the world thought that the idea came from the 60s, which of course it did. Happy Drivers Month. God, it wasn't that a memory. A blast from the past. And Councillor Moran is absolutely right. Uh, offering a $100 meat tray or gift voucher or something similar will do nothing to encourage people to come to the city. And I, I, I make the point that just two weeks ago, I went to the movies. The ticket was $15. Uh, the parking for two to three hours near the cinema was almost $16. That is why people don't come to this city. If I'd have thought about it, I'd have gone to Prospect, where there is no fee for parking, and I could have saved myself the ticket price. <coughs> Lord Mayor, uh, this proposal uh, does deserve to be rescinded, not only because of the stupidity of the proposal, but because it did, without any thought attached to it, any research or recommendation from the administration, increase the speed limit through the parklands to 60 kilometres an hour. Uh, 60 kilometres an hour past the parklands on which children play sport, where there are parks. Yes, Lord Mayor, that was the proposal. It's I, in I know, but that's not what we're talking to tonight. We're talking about the revocation as... No, we're not. Before yeah, you... about the oh. yeah. yeah, Lord Mayor, that's in there. There it is. Four, yeah, 60 kilometres an hour. They do interrupt. But anyway, uh, this is a dangerous uh, measure as well, because it not only increases the risk of accidents, if there's an adult or a child involved, it actually increases the risk of death. It increases the chances of somebody dying. This was just such a thoughtless motion. It deserves to be rescinded. And maybe, maybe with just a bit of luck, will get some good publicity for having the common sense to rescind a bad idea. Councillor Sims. Thanks very much, um, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I'm obviously very supportive of um, this approach and the intention of Councillor Moran to undo what was a disastrous uh, decision made um, last month. You know, I've been involved in uh, politics for uh, many years now, you know, quite a few years as an elected representative at different capacities. I've worked as a staffer for many years as well. 
And it's rare for an issue to really puncture the public um, consciousness. Um, and you know that you're on the wrong track when people come up to you at the street and say, what on earth are you doing? And that has been my experience with this motion, Lord Mayor. I have had countless people come up to me and say, what on earth is Adelaide City Council doing in the midst of a climate emergency? Why on earth is this council backing an initiative that is designed to increase carbon emissions? It is completely at odds with everything else that this council aspires to do. We set a target um, as part of our strategic plan to be one of the world's first carbon neutral cities. And we've been doing lots of good work to focus on reducing emissions in our city. And I think we've been developing a strong reputation internationally and nationally for the work that we have done in terms of uh, promoting green living and being a green city. But this really undermines that. I mean, Lord Mayor, Councillor Kira and the councillors that back this could not have done more to undermine council's work um, had they not, you know, taken out an ad in the Australian saying the city of Adelaide wants more emissions or something like that. I mean, it is absolutely disastrous. It's deeply embarrassing. It's been hit with an avalanche of criticism. And uh, I think Councillor Moran is presenting this council with a rare opportunity tonight to uh, take a U-turn to back away from a disastrous decision and to uh, reaffirm um, the council's credentials in uh, the environmental space and in sustainability. Uh, Councillor Canole talked earlier about bringing our city back. I think all of us want to um, see Adelaide become a more vibrant and dynamic place to live and to do business, but you don't do that by discriminating against other forms of transport. You don't do that by saying, we just want you to come in by car and we're going to roll the red carpet out for you. You do it by looking point of, point at of point, point, point of clarification, uh, Lord Mayor, Councillor Sims is grossly misrepresenting the motion. There is no exclusion of other forms of transport. Okay, there is, is no, the there is nothing in this motion. Point uh, it is Thank completely, you, com Karen. complete lie. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And look, uh, welcome, Councillor Kira. Please stand up and put your um, motion again. I'm sure the facts will speak for themselves. Um, no, no, not wasting anyone's time. An opportunity for this council to undo a terrible mistake that was made. I do just want to close by highlighting one of the elements of this motion that I thought was really uh, reckless, and that is this idea of a uniform 60 kilometre per hour um, speed limit. Um, around the parklands. And I'd be interested to know from administration whether that has in fact been um, advanced with the government and their feedback on that to date. CEO. No, three of them we need to take on notice. So I'll provide information to members. My hope is that the uh, state government will say no, that they're not going to increase the speed limit around our parklands because that will put um, our residents and pedestrians at risk. And when you have other cities around the world in the middle of a pandemic looking at what they can do to increase pedestrianisation, you have this council backing these kind of reckless and dangerous ideas. It's very silly stuff, Lord Mayor, and I urge councillors to write the wrong that they uh, committed at our last meeting and to back Councillor Moran's rescission motion. Thank you. I have Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I think all of the reasons why the Drivers Month motion uh, is clearly a um, terrible idea, not evidence-based, not going to, in fact, deliver the intent, but I think uh, Councillor Kerry intended of bringing more people to the, to the, the uh, city. I think all of those uh, debates have been well and truly made, all of those points have been made. But just to emphasise the point about the 60 kilometres per hour, the ridiculousness of that cannot be overstated given the speed limit within the city of Adelaide is a standard 50 kilometres per hour, excepting certain areas where it is lower. And that the surrounding councils, for example, Prospect, West Torrens, and areas that connect directly through City of Norwood, Payne of St. Peter's, are 40 kilometres per hour. So people would be coming through 40, speeding up to 60 through the parklands, and then dropping back down to 50. Clearly, that point needs 
further consideration and, in fact... What a clarification, Lord Mayor. I think Councillor Donovan's referring to suburban, to suburban streets. See, none, none of those... Councillor, 40... you can't... Debate. What's the point of clarification? Point of clarification, none of the 40 kilometre hour uh, zones that Councillor Donovan's referring to actually feed in yes, to those they do. arterial... OK, those yes, arterial they do. Wait, if you want to speak to it, uh, yes, speak to it in a moment. I will yes, let Councillor Donovan... <laughs> they connect finish. directly. Um, so, <laughs> entering the debate, I will respond to the, the point of clarification, and it's not a point of clarification. They connect directly through the parklands into the City of Adelaide. Those are our surrounding council areas. Um, so, uh, yeah, just emphasising the ridiculousness of that particular point. We've already covered all of the other uh, ludicrous elements within this, um, within this motion. And uh, to the point that uh, we've now got a meme competition from, uh, <laughs> from various um, Adelaide-based uh, organisations that can only assume that this is a satirical motion, but in fact, in fact, it is uh, something passed by this council, which is pretty disappointing, given there is zero evidence to suggest that anything within this would benefit the City of Adelaide in any way. Members. If not, Council, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I didn't want to, but I just want to say I'm really struggling to think of any 40 kilometre an hour roads that go directly onto Parklands Road. So I've got Goodwood Road 60, Anzac Highway 60. Other, other side being Eastern Parklands. Oh, being, North being, city, being city of uh, Charles Sturt, being city of Prospect, being city of Melbourne. Yeah, but what road? Is, I mean, um, the, so, for example, so for example, um, uh, the extension of um, the parade. No, but that's 50. That's 50. There's, a, there's definitely 50. No, no, it's not. No. So, so I'm actually, sorry, actually, I I, I'm, to... I'm actually interested as to what Helen's answer was, but I'm going to stop you there. So, yeah, um, that's, so that's in terms of that. perhaps we can clarify that outside of the chamber, but yeah, um, I'm just really struggling to. I don't think there are any. And then, well, and then of course, point, you've got the point ring. You've asked and you've answered. No, I mean, I'll just consider it a, an address. But then you've got the ring route, which is 60. That's as well. That's, that's around, but correct. Yeah, but the, the issue the issue is all the parklands roads, <clears throat> and this was actually feedback that Councillor Moran gave in our workshop in committee that there isn't a uniform speed limit. That was months and months ago now, which is part of the reason why. I'm putting it in. But anyway, that's all. Councillor, yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's the thing. Um, the what's been completely ignored is that there are fifty kilometre an hour streets up road for example and then there are there are power, parallel roads that do the exact same function the extension of public street that are 60 that are 60 so what happens is that people get parking their uh, speeding fines because they assume that that stretch of hard road they assume that that stretch hard road is going to be consistent uh, which is every every shred of common sense would say that shred of hard road should be consistent with the other uh, road that does the same function that's all that's being uh, asked by that by that uh, amendment to the motion that was very wisely put forward by the deputy lord mayor thank you councillor martin did you have a question Oh, look, uh, just a point of clarification, Lord Mayor. Members, Mayor. members, please, Councillor Martin. All of the roads in the city of Unley, except the main roads leading on to the parklands, are 40 kilometres now. All of the roads onto Kennebel Terrace um, from uh, the old hospital, which is now members, the apartment please. building, uh, down to um, uh, the end of the terrace, all enter the parklands at 40 kilometres an hour. I drive them regularly. So that wasn't a question. <laughs> um, members, if not, I'll go back to the movie to sum up. Councillor Moran. Yes, Councillor Martin's quite right. Um, when we did the Parkland Roads, um, we had to, you might notice that there are some changes through the Parklands. Mm -hmm. And I said at the time, we need them uniform during the Parklands, and then we can at the terraces say everything past this is 50 and then we don't have to chop and change. I also suggested that we um, paint the speed zones on the roads. The embryonic Team Adelaide scorned that and we ended up with a dog's breakfast. The reason that there are discrepancies through the parkland is because, as Councillor Martin said, the roads that feed into it from the Dress Circle suburbs are 40. And it's very, very city-centric to say, oh, it's just our roads. As the government pointed out at the time, we must take into account 
the main feeder roads that come in and look at their speed zones so we're not constantly changing. That is why I would support a uniform 50 k's through the parklands because as uh, speakers have said, this is where children play, cyclists cross. To actually increase the speed limit is about as lunatic as the rest of this motion. I was Queen of Shit Adelaide website for many a year and I took a certain pride in it. I was their uh, queen of, uh, uh, the last one I think was it Phil, uh, Rob saying that Anne Moran's announced that every building over one metre has to be demolished. <laughs> it was taken extremely seriously and I got quite a lot of abuse. <laughs> but I'm very glad now they've all apologised and we have a new king. <laughs> And um, this idea was the biggest dog of an idea I've ever seen. The pain on the other team members' face when they forced themselves to vote for it. Mary said she really didn't understand the actual words of the motion, but she kind of got the vibe of what he was going for. But I thought that was a very brave attempt and I really commend her for loyalty to her friend. If she really wanted to encourage cars to the city, you wouldn't offer a $100 meat tray to one in a thousand, 10,000 people. You would make your car parts cheaper, you would lower your car parking fines, and you'd do something sensible. But as I think we've noticed, we haven't really seen from this councillor very much sensible. So this is par for the course. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Oh, the revocation is lost. Um, Council members, a division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand. Remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, <laughs> Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran, and Councillor Sims. <laughs> you, members, we go to 7.4. Councillor Ibrahim. Oh, Ibrahim's the day. I'm sorry. Is the um, uh, outdoor activation grant. Thank you, Lord oh, Mayor. I... Yes, Councillor Corrison. Sorry, Lord Mayor. I'm declaring a conflict of interest um, as a business owner and uh, an individual um, in the grant process. I have an actual conflict and I'll be vacating the chamber. The chamber. Thank you, Councillor Corrison. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll move the motion as printed and seek a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ho. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Ho. Um, Lord Mayor, um, I'm not going to go into, into too much detail. I, um, as, as, as you're aware, and as most members here are aware, we have had a devastating year where businesses have been affected. Uh, this was introduced, uh, this grant, uh, the Outdoor Activation Grant, was introduced a little while ago, which seems very popular and uh, uh, it's been uh, welcomed and taken up by the business community. Um, we know that, uh, and I'm going to steal Councillor Connell's uh, um, phrase here, we here in the city of Adelaide, we're a destination city, we want to try and get people to come to the city. You know, you can go just about anywhere and get yourself a burger or get yourself, uh, I don't know, some, some clothes or whatever it is that you want to get. But people usually go to a destination to have an experience. And I think that's what Councillor Connell um, uh, often talks about, about being a destination city and about having, uh, uh, having that experience when you are here in, uh, in the city of Adelaide. We also know that uh, we've got many precincts through the city of Adelaide where you've got daytime economies and nighttime economies. Uh, and, uh, and what we've seen here with this grant is that it's, uh, it's uh, really boosted the, the confidence of the business community and it's been taken up. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, I can have the support of the chamber. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? Sure. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Martin. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. I just have an amendment. Was sent through a little bit earlier. Apologies, colleagues. Uh, did you want me to read it out? Oh, just a little amendment. How outrageous to your colleague. I'm not sure that that is an amendment to the above motion. Well, 
I'm happy to take. I'm happy to take guidance on it. But, um, so, could I have some? Thanks. Um, I think that has to come in as a separate motion, Deputy Lord Mayor, because it, it's reasoning? introduced. If I can go to um, certainly, it's introduced a whole new concept with the atmospheric lighting. So it's Ma Sorry, budget point, impacts as well. So, point of clarification: shouldn't that be interpreted outdoor activation? Isn't that legitimately part of that broad definition of outdoor activation? Yeah, the, the lighting is very much ancillary to to the outdoor activation. That was that was my that was my tent. So, what is the point of order, Councillor Martin? The point of order is yes, the first of one, the original, the original motion of too many microphones. Could someone the please turn off Councillor Corus's uh, microphone? The original motion is about a grants program to which businesses subscribe by applying, filling out an application form, meeting specific criteria. The second part of this motion is about an outdoor lighting activation, which involves a council grant, a budget of $200,000, which has nothing to do with a process that requires applications and meeting criteria. It's a completely different motion. And moreover, the outdoor activation uh, uh, So what was, what was the point of order? Besides the discussion, what is the point of order? The point of order is that it is not uh, consistent with the other motion. I don't think that's a point of order because that's point. It's not a breach of, of any of our um, standing orders. Um, so, so if well, that's a point of clarification, and I am actually asking governance for their advice on this one. So it is introducing a new concept of atmospheric lighting. There's additional budgeting away from the initial intent of the motion. Um, so, so what you're ruling. Um, so I might take this one on notice at next meeting, councillor, and then we can get administrative advice. And I know there's a lot of work being done in this already, so I think that would be good that we can actually discuss that separately. Would it be something that could come in as a motion without notice? No, because it's got a budget impact. But it needs to come in before Christmas, which means there'll be time. There needs to be time in order to make it happen. <coughs> But, uh, sorry, if I could assist, yes, it's, it's really you, just definitely. an expansion of the um, of the existing lighting that you've already rolled out. And, and I understand that, but it's not. It, it, but we're talking specifically. This motion is about the outdoor activation grant program, and you've added another program on top of the outdoor activation program, which is um, which is a grant program. And this is oh, this is a, a grant a program. This is just budgeted expenditure. This this is not a grant program. This is asking for additional lighting. So um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm actually not no, going. No, I'm not, I won't accept it um, as this. So it will have to come through on notice. That's fine. I'm happy to do that. Would the CEO be able to offer some advice on what it would take to beef up and expand on the existing lighting that has already been put in place along those streets? Because it was rolled out fairly quickly. I'd be far more comfortable if you said that you could have it, you know, a few weeks before Christmas, even if we did do it in November. Oh, meeting. the timing if we brought it through that's, at the beginning of November, could it be that's rolled out in time for Christmas? Yeah, three Lord Mayor. I would think we could. Uh, I just need to, to work it through with the team so I can advise council members. I would think in, term, yeah, in terms of the timing too, it was just as we hit all the Christmas activity. So it should be able to do that. Yeah. Yep. I would hope so. Okay, that's Any fine. Nods from there. Thank you. That's fine. I'll speak to the um, I'll speak to the original then. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, just to commend it, I think it's an excellent motion. Um, the scheme has been very uh, very well loved by businesses that have put into it. I think I think one of the reasons it's been well loved is because these hospitality businesses and food retail businesses desperately need our help. They've had uh, not much support from the city over decades gone past. Um, we've dropped the ball. We've actually let them down, in my view, as a city. We have failed our bricks and mortar businesses. We have failed our retail businesses, our hospitality businesses, a lot of them. 
Um, that's why that's why they actually need some support to reinvest in their shop fronts. That's why we've seen this scheme oversubscribed. Uh, what will probably be thrice uh, in a row. There is demand for this, and it's and it's the same. It's the same reason by council why councillors time and time again bring initiatives to this chamber to support our main streets. And I can't stress it enough. A lot of this funding is going to be going to businesses on main streets, businesses that have been neglected by the City of Adelaide, businesses that councillors hear time and time again, whether it's Councillor Martin or myself, say that we need to support these main streets, we need to support these precincts. That's why, that's why this grant is oversubscribed. The demand is there uh, and they know that we've let them down previously and they're desperately screaming out for our help. That was the spirit with which I brought the amendment. Uh, that's the spirit with which I'm speaking in favour of this um, uh, expansion of the available funds yet again. Uh, and, and I would say as well, I, I'm conscious that we're still awaiting advice from the state government, but uh, I reckon, you know, some, some might say if we put the money on the table, they're not going to put any up there. But I think if we put the money on the table and it is oversubscribed yet again, you will you can actually tender that to them as evidence of the demand for this. And perhaps even you could encourage them to look at a statewide um, grant if, 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 if there's that level of demand for bricks and mortar businesses and hospitality businesses um, in South Australia. So I think, I think this is an excellent motion. Uh, the scheme is an excellent scheme. Uh, and I wanna see us do more rounds of this in future financial years as well. Thank you. I have, did I have your hand up, Councillor Martin, before? Thank you. Oh, I think you Sims, sorry. Well, I've written them down, so I think it was Councillor Martin. I do have Councillor Sims oh, written sorry, down. Sorry. Um, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, um, the Deputy Lord Mayor is absolutely right. We have let our businesses down terribly. Um, three times, in fact, when we declined to provide them with any uh, rate relief, uh, they had three options to, to vote to give people a bit of a rate holiday and they declined it. So yes, we have let them down. But um, this, uh, and I'm sorry, Councillor Kouros is not here because she was part of the last time this came in when she didn't have a conflict of interest. And she actually um, proposed a variation to my amendment, which was to increase this funding to $750,000. Um, and she insisted that half of that had to come from the state government. Well. Uh, Lord Mayor, I was anxious to see that this money did flow to businesses, and so I agreed to that. And so what this represents is uh, uh, Team Adelaide finally taking up what was proposed last September. This is exactly the amount of money that was proposed in September. And look, I am flattered that uh, Councillor Abraham today has taken uh, what was proposed last month and brought it to this chamber a month later. Um, I know it is slow on the uptake, but it is worthwhile. I will be supporting it's it. It's completely different to what you brought in, just so you know. How is it completely different? Keep talking. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many Lord Mayors in the room, Lord Mayor, I'm never sure where to look. Um, uh, so look, I, I will be supporting this. And, uh, and Team Adelaide, look, if there are any other ideas you'd like, just ask me. I'm happy to give some fresh ideas to you to help your life. Fresh ideas. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Well, imitation is the greatest form of flattery, uh, Councillor Martin. Um, look, I uh, have some um, concerns about this. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that we uh, are in the middle of a, a very difficult um, financial position um, for our organisation. I'm conscious of the fact that we have um, cut community grants um, and support for a range of organisations that work with vulnerable people, including the Hutt Street Centre. And I'm conscious that in the past, when we've talked about contingent funding um, for much smaller amounts of money, like $100,000 um, for the Don Dunstan Foundation, when I have argued, well, let's give the money anyway, um, that has been blocked by members of this council. So I'm concerned that we could um, potentially be spending $400,000 at this time on top of what we have already spent um, that concerns me. Now, I recognise that there has been significant um, uptake and interest in this scheme. Um, but what I would like to see happen is that maybe that be part of a budget bid in the future, rather than us moving into this reactionary space of saying, oh, well, we've had more applications, um, so therefore let's put more money in the kitty 
And then when, again, it's oversubscribed, we say, well, let's put more money back in. And this council has um, provided a lot of support for um, outdoor activation for businesses. Let's not forget that we forego um, half a million dollars of rate revenue a year because we waived outdoor dining fees. That has had very little impact. Um, indeed, um, there was a candidate campaigning, I think, in the recent council elections who was campaigning to get rid of outdoor dining fees um, because so many of the businesses are not aware that it's been abolished, um, which is frustrating because I think about how we could spend that revenue, particularly at a time where um, we're facing significant pressures. So, of course, I'm supportive of what Councillor Abrahimsida is trying to achieve here. But, um, you know, we had a, um, a, a hijack of the motion in terms of adding in um, lighting. Um, maybe that's, you know, money that could be spent on lighting or, or other priorities. Um, I'd be delighted to see some action on, um, on lighting in North Adelaide, um, Lord Mayor. I feel like I've been waiting for Hadrian's Wall to be built um, for those fairy lights uh, to come online. But um, I am concerned that if we spend money on something like this, um, then we are foregoing um, potential expenditure on other meritorious projects. So let's hold this off and let's revisit it as part of our next budget process because $400,000 is a lot of money, particularly at a time of um, crisis for our organisation, particularly when one considers the meritorious funding requests that have been knocked back. Uh, Councillor Knoll and then Councillor Hart. I would like to move an amendment to number four. And, and if that is a, uh, in the event a uh, state government is unable, that's uh, removing uh, as, a, as a new number four. So, uh, state government is unable to contribute uh, additional funds by the 30th of October. Council increases its contribution. You might want to slow down just a little bit. That's right, sorry, yes. To the outdoor activation grant by an additional $475,000 to allow for the funds of applications. which met the criteria received in round two. As in brackets, as at the 8th of October. Whatever punctuation I'm checking. Okay, um, I'll look for a seconder. It has to be someone who hasn't spoken. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Mackey. So, Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak to that? Well, I suppose if we're just looking at that, I mean, uh, we are putting in uh, um, sort of parameters so that we are uh, providing the assistance uh, to business in as timely as we can. I mean, we have uh, Christmas coming and, and our, uh, you know, the busiest time of the year for the city overall. And we have been trying to find ways to support business that they, you know, that they're really uh, looking for and, and uh, you know, uh, and have taken up. Um, I do think, uh, you know, we are trying to find genuine ways to assist. This is, is one of those which is, uh, and people do know, I've, I've had that conversation with others, um, you know, businesses around the, the city, and they have noticed that, you know, we have in many cases uh, taken off the outdoor dining fees and things. So this is just a way uh, to, to round up the uh, assistance we're giving and really assist as many as we can uh, as they're getting ready, you know, for the busy time of the year. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I thank Councillor Abraham today for the motion and note uh, the support already expressed, and also respectfully the uh, the, the broader budget point that um, uh, Councillor Sims has made. Uh, but I'm more than happy to second Councillor Knowles, Knowles um, uh, variation to this motion, since it does speak to uh, applications already lodged that did and would have met the criteria had the additional funds been available. And 
one thing that I think those of us who are or have been in business know that uh, in, enlivening our footpaths at this particular point in the recovery cycle is incredibly important. And in fact, it can be delivered by businesses keen to grow their, their footprint for trade in a COVID safe way um, very, very quickly. Um, and so, uh, yes, I'll be happy to support. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. I have Councillor Ho. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. I would also like to support the Federation and uh, to talk about it uh, like <coughs> The, the ground has been extremely popular and welcomed by the by the local business. After I mean, since the pandemic started, we have we haven't actually offered them enough support. And underst understand that there were a lot of businesses were disappointed that like they are unable to have the the rate relief. But there were a lot more people now start to talk about the grants because like after we pay that after we spend the money, not just we create a lot more jobs, but also we make a big change after we spend the money. We make a good changes for our city after we spend that money. So, and besides, the, the one more thing I'd like to mention that just responds to Councillor Singh's comment. Let's not forget, it is the ratepayer who pay the rates. It's the ratepayers who vote us in, therefore we employ the CEO and CEO employ his staff to run the city. It is not our money. I don't really care whether or not there's any. Um, I, I don't really. I don't really know what kind of projects or organisations comes to the teams refer to. But we need to back our ratepayers before we can back anyone else. And that's why I like to support this motion. And that's why I like to support these variations to fulfil all the criteria that received from received in run two. Thanks, Roman. Thank you, Councillor Ho. CEO, you want to make a comment? Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. I just need to state. Obviously, there's been an increase in the amount provided for in this motion to $475,000, which is nearly half a million dollars. And I just need to remind you of the impact that COVID has had as, on us as an organisation. I remind you that um, we're currently searching for efficiencies and trying to achieve a $20 million saving in our operational budget. Um, we're currently up forecasting a deficit of $36.4 million. And so this motion, if it's successful and is applied, will, need, will mean that we're gonna to need to search for further savings or seek further borrowings to cover it. So um, just be mindful of the fact that we do have limitations from a financial point of view, and that we're going through quite a, a detailed process at the moment, seeking savings to enable us to continue to operate in the way that we used to. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you, CEO. Uh, Councillor Sims. <coughs> Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just want to be clear on exactly, um, so if this uh, amendment is carried, yes. what in total will be Council's expenditure on um, this project? So, so instead of four, an additional 400, it's an additional three, 475, and we've already committed 375. Um, the first grant was funded by the state government. So in effect, it's close to a million dollars that we would have spent. It will have been. Um, the, if the first round was 330, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah, so at least over $800,000 uh, being spent on one project nearly a million dollars at a time when we're trying to find 20 million dollars worth of savings and look now i make the point that's not a target that i supported that was a target imposed by councillor hyde um, on this council and i think it was councillor martin who suggested let's have a committee and work through some of the elements that was not that and instead it was come up with the savings <coughs> and so our administration have been in an invidious position of trying to find $20 million worth of savings. And I fear that will have an impact on uh, service delivery in the city of Adelaide going forward, because how can it not, when we're talking about, or when we've been in a situation where we're seeing reduction in staff numbers, efficiencies, and so on, of course that is going to have an impact on um, the service offering. And yet against that backdrop, you have some members of this council engaging in a spendathon where they're literally signing away close to a million dollars in the blink of an eye. 
I mean, imagine if I came to this council, Lord Mayor, and suggested spending $475,000 on one of my projects. Imagine the eye rolling and the reactions that we have <coughs> around this chamber. This is magic pudding economics, Lord Mayor. Magic pudding economics from those that lecture others about money trees when they haven't actually done their due prudence, they haven't done their appropriate uh, consideration of the implications of this. Of course, I support, as I think we all do, providing more support to businesses at this time. But whenever I have proposed measures to support people who are unemployed, which would have cost $200,000, members of this council turned up their noses. When I proposed giving a non-contingent grant to the Hutt Street Centre, members of this council turned up their noses. They were happy to engage in a slash and burn budget that took money away from important organisations in our community. And yet now they want us to cop up close to a million dollars. Councillor, I will actually point of clarification, we did not take any money away from any organisation in this integrated business plan of budget. We did not. That that is that is misinformation. Just make the point, Lord Mayor, that people should think very carefully about they, what they are doing, and if they want to reconsider the efficiency dividends that have been imposed on this council, which are completely at odds with what other governments are doing around the country and indeed around the world, then let's have that conversation. But if not, live in the straight jacket that you have woven for yourselves. David, Lord Mayor. <laughs> Just quickly, given given this given this argument is, is mainly centering around this four hundred and seventy five thousand dollar figure, um, I just wanted to I just wanted to reiterate that the reason the reason we're aiming to find savings, or the reason that I suggested it, uh, is so that we can put funds and resources into more meaningful things rather than just operating expenditure, rather than just business as, as usual. It's so it's so that we actually have more to play with year on year in each budget so we can give more to our ratepayers. It's not just it's not just so well I'll tell you what magic pudding economics is it's giving 16 million dollars away including including to vacant lots. <laughs> Councillor okay. Martin's motion would have can given we? hundreds of thousands of dollars away to patches of dirt in the city that deliver nothing by way of value to the city of Adelaide. That's what sorry sorry I just need Thank to address you. that little man. But you. But given, given this is that is why that's why we're finding efficiency so that we can consider worthy projects like this, worthy projects like this, giving back to our ratepayers, giving back to the people who paid half a million dollars in outdoor dining fees year on year for many 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 years. Those those same people that actually uh, make a make an attractive environment for workers to come into the city and then go to after they finish, after they knock off their shift. They're the only businesses that are going to get corporates back into the city. If you create an experience for them, you want to get people back into the city, you need to make it a place where they want to be. And at the moment, it's not a place where they want to be. So many businesses have closed, <coughs> they're, 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 they struggle to see the reason to come back into their office environment. Um, and that's why even the public sector are struggling to get their employees back into their offices here in the city of Adelaide. This is a scheme that would support them in a COVID safe manner, because let's not forget, the whole point of this was that it's about outdoor activation. People are outdoors, people are distance, it's a little bit safer. That was back in the days when we couldn't, God forbid, I hate this term, vertical consumption. We couldn't engage in vertical consumption, my God. Um, but. But this scheme, this scheme is good, particularly going into the warmer months, which, you know, stretch a little bit further into March. Um, uh, this scheme is good. That's why we're finding efficiency, so that we can fund things like this, not so that we can fund other random pet projects about uh, some malarkey about being a good global citizen for this cause or that cause, which is entirely outside of our purview, but so we can give back to the people that pay for this building, that pay our staff's wages, that pay our allowances, that pay for the roads, the footpaths, any greening that we do, so we can give back to them. That's the point. This is a good motion. I endorse it too. Um, Councillor Kira. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, hearing Councillor Sims talk about magic pudding uh, economics is, uh, look, that the rhetoric uh, has been racked, ratted up. It's so rich that really probably it could, it, you know, I think Council Sims should keep it up and you know, it, it'd help uh, fix our budget problems. Uh, the richness would just come flowing in. Um, 
And given that uh, we have had absurd, absolutely, it is really galling to hear that that kind of um, that kind of accusation of hypocrisy. Uh, we have heard uh, proposals that we deliver. We've heard a proposal that we deliver a rate cut uh, to the entire the entire city uh, that would apply not just uh, to vacant blocks of land, but that would also apply to banks. We, what has been proposed by Council Martin is a rate cut that would okay. go to banks, and at the same time, at the same time, Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin failed to even turn up to vote uh, for a rebate for small businesses, an actually Councilor. effective rate cut. When it comes to an actual rate cut, a rebate for small business, they don't even turn up. They don't even bother to Councilor, turn up. And we're talking to the motion rich. before you. It is astoundingly rich to hear this kind of. I think uh, the sensible councillors ought to utterly and completely ignore that kind of absurd, uh, at, at utterly absurd uh, pure politics rhetoric coming from the, um, that particular corner um, on the substantive on the substantive I've got concerns I've got concerns about I've got concerns about uh, councillor Moran this guy is a councillor councillor Moran as Wendy Chapman said that's Lord Mayor to manage Manage people like oh, Councillor Moran, please be quiet. Councillor Kerr, could you please finish of, and talk to the bit, motion before you? Must, that's, have, that's, must, have, must have hit a home. Yeah, we can. Um, no. Must have hit a um, I'm concerned about the uh, increasing amounts of money. I do think that we have a greater economy to be concerned about than simply. Uh, well, not simply, but, but then just uh, businesses, uh, hospitality businesses with outdoor space. And I do think that other businesses across the city, uh, quite rightly, will be, will be saying, well, where's, where, where's our assistance? Uh, we can't have an outdoor activation component. However, uh, as, Count, as Deputy Lord Mayor has ably articulated, uh, this is about much more than simply those businesses. Uh, this is about creating uh, creating a space that people want to come in. Uh, there are flow on activations. There are other businesses that can uh, retail that can uh, remain open during these periods. Uh, but it is also a very good show of goodwill uh, in a time of crisis. This is a responsible <coughs> show of goodwill. I do think that we can find savings. Uh, it would be amazing if some councillors maybe thought about uh, not flooding the chamber with useless, redundant Councilor, motions Mar and Councilor causing useless, Kara. entirely germane. <laughs> I would say, Sorry. This, uh, this is I, uh, I humbly submit, Lord Mayor, this is entirely germane. I would think, considering the call for fiscal rectitude. Oh, uh, thank 30, you. 30, thank 30, you, 30, you very much, Councillor Kerr. Uh, thank you. No, no, sorry. Time's done. Sorry. I had an interruption, Lord Mayor. No, sorry, Councillor Kerr. You had your time. Um, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, just a, a, a couple of questions, Lord Mayor. And, and look, I apologise uh, as the Sunday Mail says, I'm starting to feel half drunk now. It's really keen. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, I wonder if the administration could provide some advice to us about what the, uh, and, and I, I do appreciate some of this has been mentioned, what the budgeted operational deficit is for the full financial year and what QF1 is showing in terms of blowout from that figure. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Claire, can you respond, please? Uh, through the presiding member, uh, QF1 is due to come into council in the first week in November into committee. Um, I think we're currently sitting at around 36 um, odd million operating deficit forecast for this financial year. Um, however, our um, rates revenue is holding up well. Um, so first uh, quarter rates were due at the end of September um, and we're on track and where we um, expect it to be. Um, we're also just checking our other revenue lines. So I'll be able to give you more information. I wouldn't really want to um, uh, share QF1 at this point. We do need to just work through um, a few more data sets, um, but that will be coming through to you shortly in early November. Okay, so the current budgeted deficit is 36.4 million and you can't provide advice on how much that's blown up at this point in time. Thank you. Okay, um, and also, if I could have some guidance from the administration, the way in which I'm reading this amendment from uh, Councillor Canole is that the program has closed. That is to say, if you didn't have your application in by the 8th of October, 
you will not receive anything that is lodged now because it is clearly closed 8th of October. Is that, that is correct. Is that the way I'm it, it is it is closed. This is saying this is addressing the second round that we've already had. But the previous motion allowed for new applications to be considered. This one does not. It closes Correct. 8th of October. Correct. So this shuts it down pretty much. Correct. Was that the intention of the mover? To shut it down? To address the ones that have already come in. So if you haven't had an application in, then you don't receive or cannot qualify for this program. I'm pretty sure that's what that reads. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. Well, look, um, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, <laughs> look, I, w I, I will support it. Oh, I don't know what I'm supporting. There it is. It's back again. Um, look, I will support it, but it is disappointing to be arguing as Councillor Ho is this is how we support our businesses. This is what we can do in the lead up to Christmas and so on. It is in fact misleading. This is all over. If you didn't have your application in last week, um, you've missed out. There is no chance of any assistance. And in fact, we will be saying to a lot of people, tough luck, too late. Um, and that was not my intention in supporting it. I wanted it to be available until the funds were exhausted. Unless, of course, Councillor Canole has specialist knowledge, uh, inside knowledge, that says $475,000 is what it will take to soak up all of those. Point, point of clarification here. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, uh, looking at the administration's comments, that 475000 would have been knocked back if we'd unworthy this. So, just it's so you know. It's in comment number four. I, I didn't see that. Lord so, Mayor. the comment number four, the $475,000 is uh, the number of applications that have come in as at the 8th of October okay, now that I have, are yet to be funded. Okay, well, I apologise. I understand now. So, the program is closed. This is it. Okay, well, look, I'll support that, but I am disappointed because uh, people will be misled into believing that it's still open when it's not. Uh, in all other respects, it is the uh, Councillor Kouros prior to having a conflict uh, motion, uh, and therefore I will uh, support it. But look, uh, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I do think it's important to address the assertions uh, of Councillor Kira and uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor that somehow this is a better substitute, a substitute for uh, rate relief for businesses. It is not. Um, it is entirely discriminatory. If you don't have a street front, point of clarification, you don't. It was never put forward. It was never put forward as a substitution for rate relief. It was never. There, there is, but. Councillor it is, it is Councillor not Martin. a substitute. Uh, uh, Councillor Ho painted it as such, and so did the Deputy Lord Mayor. Not Councillor Kira, but now he has done, of course, and I'm sure he'll interrupt Will again. Um, this is not a substitute. It is a discriminatory mechanism. I support it. I emphasise it is discriminatory. It will not help, for example, businesses in Chinatown that I door knocked uh, when I was trying to persuade Team Adelaide to support rate relief for our businesses. Many of them were saying to me, uh, you know, we, we get nothing, and still they get nothing. They don't have outdoor dining, but they are businesses struggling. And I well remember, and I said at the time, one businessman who had tears in his eyes and said that his business was down by heart. Now, that person gets nothing. Uh, but I will support this. It is something, uh, it is minuscule, but it, it's something. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Zedek. Can I speak to this in a minute? Um, there were a couple of points that were uh, that were raised, Lord Mayor. One was the pressure that is uh, on our administration. Can I just say that um, our CEO and his executive leadership team are doing a fantastic job leading us, steering the ship through these tough times. So they are doing a, they're doing a wonderful job, and and they must be commended for it. But. Let's let's remind ourselves, Lord Mayor. Let's remind ourselves. Commercial rates annually we collect what over eighty million dollars a year. No, How much are we talking about here? Commercial. Commercial. Okay, yeah. So that's what I said. Just over eighty million. How much are we talking about here? So let's start to put things into perspective. 
And, 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 and one last thing, Lord Mayor, one last thing. Um, uh, Councillor Martin, you, you speak about fresh ideas. You, you do a lot of recycling of, uh, of, of, uh, of motions, which... Uh, uh, which, which, Can we you know, stick you're, to you're, the you're motion, Councillor? Uh, Lord Mayor, we're not blindly splashing money around. I don't feel like Oprah saying, you have some cash, you have some cash, you have some cash. No, what we are doing is, is we, are, we are giving grants that are directly related to outcomes. I'm not just going up to some business saying, here's, some, here's a check, go and have fun with it. No, show me some outcomes. So maybe that business will go and, I don't know, buy a, um, a new uh, door or window or some sort of a canopy or something like that. That's how you stimulate the economy. So think about that. Think about that. That and the 80 million that, that we collect every year. Um, members, there are no caps left, Duncan. Just really briefly, Lord Mayor, look, I think this is a, a great motion um, in many ways, but I think it just ultimately comes down to we need to consider our, our budget. This is an extra half a million dollars. I would, if we had half a million dollars sitting there ready to go, I would absolutely endorse and support this. But, you know, I think we need to come back to looking at the basic figures, as the CEO said, we're, we're, 20, we're looking for that $20 million. We've just had to make some really serious uh, cuts to staffing. And, and I think an extra half a million dollars is beyond our reach at this point in time. So in other circumstances, if we had more budget, I'd happily support it. But in this instance, I think it would be uh, irresponsible to do so. Uh, members, if not, I will go back to the mover. Council Canole to sum up. Um, interesting debate. Um, I think we, for some, they missed the point a little bit. And then if we look through it first, this is very targeted. Most of our businesses that are in trouble are around food service, uh, and others, uh, you know, with their offices and things like that, they're, they're, those decisions are made by businesses uh, to keep their people home. Most of them are shop fronts that have a problem. So this is a way that directly helps those sorts of businesses that rely on the concentration of people that work in the city, of which we're still 40 to 50,000 short. You know, they are slowly coming back, but not fast enough to uh, to support them very quickly. So these are the sorts of things that you can do in, and it is still what I would consider to be quite modest uh, in the assistance. Um, you know, we are improving our streetscape. Because again, we're talking about uh, an experience, etc. We need to start doing those sorts of things. Um, we are also talking about this is again this is targeted relief, uh, and we are yet to still uh, hear back from what other sorts of ideas that the administration has, what other things we can do. Because what we're supporting here is our rate base. Because if we assist people now, and of course it's it's and it's still not a huge sum in the, in the context of 14 to 16 million dollars of, of giving it away to everybody, and and it's not really going to assist those that really need it, we are going to be able to start to look at things that will assist supporting our revenue base, and this these are one of the sorts of things that will enable that to happen, and uh, you know we cannot, and this will enable us going forward. Uh, to, uh, to at least minimise the damage uh, and to support business to come back, uh, particularly in March or so, as, as we are heading out of all the extra benefits that they're getting. And uh, and again, all the other sorts of uh, emotions that I heard uh, about supporting those in need, well, if my pockets are empty because my, my ongoing income is, is uh, in danger, and this is what this supports, then I can I can then uh, do something. But right now, we've got to do at least something for the business and continuing with the administration's help. Members, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. With all those in favour of the amendment, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Mackey, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, members, that now becomes a substantive, and I will ask if anyone wishes to speak before I go back to the mover. Councillor Abraham said, thank you, summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, and that is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. <laughs> Councillor Martin, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Mackey, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, 
Members, that takes us now. Oh, if we could get Councillor Kouros back, please. Um, members, that takes us to item 17.5, Adelaide Review, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, um, I learned, uh, oh, I need a second. Sorry. I didn't see which hand went up first. Um, Councillor Mackey. Thank you. Um, look, I learned, uh, as we all did with great sadness uh, last month, uh, that the Adelaide Review would no longer be published and that this edition, uh, the October edition, would be the last. Um, since uh, publication began in 1984, um, it's fostered a continuous conversation, not only in Adelaide, but throughout South Australia, about uh, culture, arts, politics, and plenty more. And it's also encouraged and launched a string of successful careers for authors, uh, journalists, commentators, um, uh, writers of long form fiction, uh, all kinds of uh, writers. Um, it's never been boring. It's often been controversial. Um, I think just about everybody has been bitten by the Adelaide Review at some time. Uh, my turn came uh, during the editorship ownership of Christopher Pearson, uh, and that was a jolly little time. I'm ever so grateful that uh, Christopher published a full apology. But nevertheless, um, I would be one of the very few people in this place who hasn't, uh, you know, had uh, a, a um, I would be part of a large family, that is, of people who've been bitten by the Adelaide Review. And indeed, it's also uh, been very critical of the City Council over the years. I, I don't think there is a City Council over the last 30 years that hasn't you know, copped a bucket full from the uh, Adelaide Review. And in fact, uh, this month, John Bridgeland criticises us over the uh, Stadium Management Authority, telling us the bid's yet another case which illustrates a City Council trend of writing policy to fit proposals and development concepts. I think we can concepts. read it, we could read it later. Yeah. 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 But you know, it goes on to say that we're basically looking after lessees and license holders rather than the parklands. But uh, the review has always uh, provoked discussion um, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it will be missed. I will miss it. Um, even when I disagreed with it, I thought it was an important publication and uh, one of the great monthlies in the world. You don't look like you agree with me, Lord Mayor. I do. In fact, if you've read the latest issue, you see I feel very strongly about the Adelaide Good. Review. Good. Good. Yes, I have read it. Thank yes. you. You just looked as though you were disapproving. So, uh, look, I, I just want to say Valet uh, Adelaide Review and uh, congratulate all of its uh, former editors, writers and staff for um, a hell of a ride over the, the last 36 years. Thanks, Councillor Mackey. Oh, Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I realise time is moving on and Councillor Martin's very eloquently uh, extolled the virtues and the loss that um, a, a lot of readers uh, and um, uh, cultural uh, um, observers, players, commentators uh, will, make, uh, will feel with the passing of the Adelaide Review. We uh, uh, opened our family business in Prince Booksellers one month, I can't, we can't now remember whether it was the month before or the month after the Adelaide Review, and we certainly advertised in the very first issue. And um, I feel it's passing. It's not only been a great and August journal of review, it's also been a fabulous place of preview um, as well. Um, and it's very, very sad that the, uh, the decimation of the cultural uh, economy uh, through the COVID pandemic uh, has had such a significant impact on the sustainability of, of this uh, publication. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the implication uh, that the, the impacts elsewhere around the world for um, Senor Javier Moll's uh, uh, media empire. Um, I, I'm going to miss it and um, I, I uh, think that losing that additional platform for crit criticism uh, in, our society, in our society here in Adelaide, South Australia, uh, we're diminished as a result. And I regret its passing and absolutely endorse the motion. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I also want to um, add my uh, voice to this and, and to 
uh, put on record, of course, that you know my thoughts. I know everybody here, and uh, with the staff that have been affected and that have lost um, their jobs, and it is terribly sad to lose the um, Adelaide Review. Like um, the other speakers, I've had um, my own experiences with the Adelaide Review um, over the years, and one of the things that I've really valued is the fact that they offer uh, critical analysis and independent um, journalism. And you know, it's often said of um, Adelaide, we're a one newspaper town. And in that context, the Adelaide Review has been really critically important in terms of offering an independent perspective, but also often commentary around the civic and cultural life of um, our city. Uh, it's played a very important role, I think, in promoting the arts and celebrating um, the amazing work that's done by our creative sectors. Um, but it's also, you know, held a pretty critical eye over not just local council, state government as well, and a critical eye over Adelaide as a city in terms of our place um, in the world. And I think our democracy is always strengthened by having more voices, not less. And so I'm very sad to see the closure of the Adelaide Review. I do hope that um, in the days and months ahead, we will see more diversity in our media here in South Australia because I think our democracy is really well served by that. But uh, at the moment, my thoughts are very much with the staff um, who've been affected and all those that have been associated with the Adelaide Review over the years. It's been a great institution. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, um, and uh, I know that, well, some of you that do read the Adelaide Review would have seen that I did actually write a piece in the Adelaide Review, um, which I'm sure many of you said at the centre myself. Losing the publication, um, very sad to see it go. Um, and with that, I'll go to Councillor Martin. To some floor, members to the floor, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Thank you. Um, So we are at up to uh, 17.6, Councillor Martin, Council Participation and Roundtables. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, second. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, as Councillor uh, Moran was uh, discussing a while ago, um, you know, one of the, uh, the best ways of managing, or managing an organisation, in, in my view, in my personal view, is um, uh, to be um, inclusive, to practice inclusion. Um, and exclusion is, in uh, my experience, a formula that always leads to uh, less than perfect outcomes. And so it is, Lord Mayor, with your uh, round tables on Hutt Street and on Melbourne Street recently here at Town Hall, um, which, um, as the motion says, uh, brainstormed ideas on future development, vision and plans to create new and exciting experiences and opportunities for business and residents <coughs> and city users, and uh, encouraged greater communication and collaboration between stakeholders. Now, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, I am, uh, I'm sure it hasn't escaped you, a stakeholder in that I was elected to represent the people of North Adelaide, including the people of uh, Melbourne Street, and uh, I was excluded. Apparently, we were all excluded uh, from that discussion. Um, so too was the North Adelaide Society, which is the largest residential representative group in North Adelaide. So too was the Friends and Residents of North Adelaide Group. So too was the largest employer in the suburb. Now, um, it was not, in my view, an inclusive occasion. Uh, uh, I understand, Lord Mayor, that the outcome of this motion will be that your team Adelaide will support your um, uh, expectation, that is, that you be supported. Um, but uh, I ask you to reflect on this decision and consider whether there might not be a way to include elected members. Um, in discussing this roundtable uh, uh, for Melbourne Street with the State Government Minister last week, um, they expressed surprise and suggested to me it would be akin to the Premier excluding the Minister for Health uh, from a health roundtable and suggested that maybe um, if it is that you don't wish councillors to participate, um, then they could be invited to be observers, that is non-participatory uh, observers, 
who at least have the opportunity of hearing what it is that the future holds for the areas that they represent. Uh, Lord Mayor, I have no expectation. I know uh, where this is going, but nevertheless, um, I do ask you to reflect on it and uh, perhaps find a way to accommodate um, our wishes. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I haven't got much to add there, but um, with all due respect, Lord Mayor, I thought it was a foolish idea. Um, you uh, excluded the representatives of that area, the area councillors, uh, Councillor Kouros and Councillor Martin. Uh, many of the people that attended contacted me and wondered why their elected representatives weren't there um, and were very critical of it. The groups such as the North Adelaide Society um, and the other societies that weren't included were also very critical. So if this was aimed at um, increasing your knowledge or support in that area, it, it badly backfired. Um, Councillor Martin and I are so in touch with our suburb, we don't need to go to that. I would like to have been an observer, but as we live, breathe and work in our suburb, I don't need to go to an artificial round table. But I don't expect to be excluded like that, and I find it very offensive. And for your own personal information, take it as you like. As I said, as uh, Councillor Martin said, your team will fall behind you and say, what a wonderful idea it is. Then they don't really want to hear from the ratepayers anyway, so they trust you. But it was a foolish idea, and you were diminished by doing it. Councillor Adler, Lord Mayor, I just had a uh, quick question. I know that um, uh, there's commentary there around uh, uh, providing us uh, with updates uh, when these roundtables do happen. And I know uh, through the uh, presiding member's report, uh, we do get updated on all your activities. But would it be appropriate uh, for me to, to, to ask um, uh, the reason why um, councillors aren't involved in some of these roundtables? Um, well, I actually started the roundtables uh, off the back of the Hindley Street one, which has been going for several years. Um, that was a, a, a very good um, case study in terms of how the street got together and they themselves worked to resolve some of the issues in the street. Um, so the Hindley Street Roundtable is uh, SAPOL, the Licensing Commissioner, uh, the representatives of businesses, uh, the Australian Hotel Association and the um, West End Association. Um, and there's been a lot of work done and it was really, uh, when they first got together, it was quite, um, not everybody was comfortable speaking with each other and there was um, a lot of uh, things that had to be resolved in that space. Um, equally with um, Hutt Street, this when I brought the Hutt Street round table together, it was the first time many of them had met each other. And it's uh, really a trying to facilitate them working together and collaborating with each other, getting to know each other and being informed of the work that members have already been informed of through the design room, etc., and what the intentions of master planning. Um, the reason that I haven't uh, invited all the councillors is because as Lord Mayor, this is part of my consultation process with the stakeholders. Um, it's also, I wanted the voice to be, the voice around the table to be the people that are at the table and not the elected members. And uh, I know the member that you're speaking of, uh, Councillor Martin, who has also asked to be part of these round tables. I don't think that's relevant. This is for our community to be able to work together. Um, there is a few more things that have to happen in terms of how I can actually make sure that I'm communicating properly with members and at the appropriate time, um, we will have some open forums is the intention. Um, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, and that's what you are, Lord Mayor. I mean, if Councillor um, Martin wants to be, have his, uh, be involved in a, a Lord Mayor round table, maybe you should run for Lord Mayor next time mm -hmm. round, um, because that's what you are, Lord Mayor. And you have been uh, part of the administration of comment is um, that you have been running these uh, round tables like, like it says it here, but like you just said, for Hartley Street and Hunt Street, and it hasn't been an issue before. 
um, until now where Councillor Martin feels excluded from the table. Um, so, you know, if he feels that way, then I'm really sorry, maybe we should see someone for it because. Um, oh, Councillor Coros, come on, yeah. come on. Sorry, I come on. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on Lord Mayor. To, to, suggest, to, to suggest that I have a psychiatric illness is oh, I don't a think really. That's what she said. She didn't use that word. Please sit down, members. Members, Councillor Kouros, have you finished? No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't because I find it offensive that the Lord Mayor cannot do her job. That is what she's doing. She's speaking with elect, with uh, with with people out there in the community, um, key stakeholders, in finding way, it's listening to them. And, um, and this is the first time that Melbourne Street has had a voice. And I commend the Lord Mayor for going out there and making it a point to sit down with stakeholders and to talk to them about what this street needs. Now, now that is really key and really important for her to understand and to bring a report back to council. Now, as elected, as an elected member of North Ward, I know what people are saying in the street, and I talk about this with the Lord Mayor. But for her to hear it from key stakeholders, it's great. And I think that it's um, it, it shouldn't be a very large group. I think it being a small selected group helps with actually identifying key um, issues or, or things that is needed in the area. So I think we have to be very careful in what you're asking for here because I think you know you're taking away the right for the Lord Mayor to do her job, and that is what she's doing. She's doing her job to speak to people out there in the community. There are other forums that we are invited to that we get together with the Lord Mayor will do, I'm sure, in the future, but under COVID conditions, we haven't been able to have a lot of community forums where I'm sure that we will have the opportunity to be there while the Lord Mayor speaks and addresses the community as, as a whole. But this is a completely different um, uh, approach to what um, the what what is happening here. So I think, you know, having the um, having the discussions uh, like we have been doing, like she has been doing with Harmony Street and Hutt Street, and we have been having some great outcomes from it. And I think it's great that she's out there doing that, and I commend her for it. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Well, Lord Mayor, look, um, I, I uh, find it offensive that um, elected members are excluded from discussing matters related to uh, their territory, to their, to their wards. Um, and I am delighted, nevertheless, to hear that there is a communication between you and Councillor Kouros and businesses, a select exclusive group in Melbourne Street, um, but it doesn't provide me with the real comfort that I need, and that is that there is an inclusive process, uh, one that reasonably includes local members, as indeed it did. Um, there has been no meeting of resident groups with an agenda or minutes for quite some time. There have been afternoon teas, as I understand, at, at which um, some of the attendees have expressed concern that there is no agenda and no minutes, uh, and as I understand it, would prefer to see them. There has been no precinct forum for well before COVID began. Now, I commend you also for wishing to be involved in understanding the issues related to the, uh, the various precincts of the city. I think that is part of the Lord Mayor's job. My point is though, if those discussions are exclusive <coughs> with the elected members and are narrow in their focus with just a few invited parties, it does become a select group, an exclusive group, uh, that will ultimately lead to alienation, not only of the, the members who are excluded, but of businesses and residents. And I ask you, Lord Mayor, again, uh, to consider the possibility that if you do not wish to have elected members actually participating in the events, then you simply ask them to be observers. It is not an unreasonable request from an elected member of this place uh, and that it would be uh, welcomed by those of us who see that there would be some benefit. I would uh, welcome you to come through my door any time, Councillor Martin, if there's further things you'd like to discuss. Members, if we can go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That 
is lost. Um, 17.7 <laughs> members. <laughs> Councillor Martin, <laughs> independent <laughs> review. <laughs> Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran. Um, members, we have 17.7. Seventeen point seven, Councillor Martin, independent review of your say. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, um, Lord Mayor, um, I have read uh, the administration response to this proposal, um, which says, uh, from what I can see, that everything is tickety boo. Um, and I am here to say that I do not think it is. Um, uh, your say is a problem for many of our uh, ratepayers. Um, they object specifically to what they feel is a lengthy and sometimes unresponsive registration process. Others uh, object to the binary nations, uh, 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 binary construction of the questions. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you strongly agree? Do you strongly disagree? Um, and we know also um, that in most circumstances, issues are much more complicated than do you agree or disagree. Uh, and we know also that your say can be corrupted as it was when uh, some years ago, respondents uh, had their names entered into a competition with a prize if they could prove they voted in favor of a helicopter landing pad. And uh, finally, Lord Mayor, many people still prefer paper responses, uh, particularly older people. Um, and we don't facilitate that. In fact, um, one of our uh, ratepayers objected to the recent connector consultation, um, uh, complaining that um, one of the pages had been deleted from the paper copies made available. I know the administration has addressed that, um, but it came with a, um, a, a small sermon that paper is not preferred. Now, look, um, as one industry expert told me, um, our commitment to consultation depends on how genuine we are in encouraging feedback. And, and right now, I'm putting it to council that we are less than genuine. Um, um, your say on website, on its website alone, says that uh, its consultation process does not replace face-to-face -face consultation. Um, and there are alternatives that do provide that, that are emerging. Now, uh, I'm not suggesting that we forget paper or face-to-face, -face, but I am asking that the administration has a look at what else is available. Uh, Department of Inf Infrastructure and Transport, the old DIPTI, um, has uh, come back in recent times with a, a process that provides a much richer bedrock of information. Um, it's supplemented um, uh, by a um, well, in fact, the system is a virtual room into which people can go and actually make comments about the nature of what they're seeing, from a tree on a street corner to the size of a building, to a roof on a building, to the color of the bank. Uh, and that's supplemented by what I am told is a cheaper system than your say, um, which is called social pinpoint. So between the two of them, there is much richer information available. Um, it, this allows uh, also uh, people to register in a much more simple way. It's an individual registration. Um, but look, these are things that I'm asking the administration to have a look at um, instead of the current approach. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm very uh, supportive of this. Um, when I was first elected to uh, council back in 2014, I had members of the community raise concerns with me at that time uh, about your say. Um, their main concern was that your say was in fact no say at all because of the way in which the um, questions are often constructed, uh, because of the um, onerous um, gateway to access the website <coughs> and to participate, members of the community were concerned that they, they were being disenfranchised. That was back in 2014. 
Um, and since then, I've seen um, your say continue to um, be used. And of course, that the um, I guess one of the more recent um, uh, illustrations of that was the use of the your say process um, for the bogus consultation around the crows um, proposal. Um, where we had members of the community feeling very concerned about the way in which that um, consultation was constructed. But that's not a criticism um, of me to make it clear of um, the work that administration did. It is a criticism of the elected body that determined the questions um, and the structure of that. But additionally, there was an issue for people logging into your say, and I was hearing from members of the community, gee, it's really difficult to register and to participate through this process. Um, so I think what Councillor Martin's proposing is very sensible. Let's get an independent review done and work out whether this is actually the approach that we want to continue to take to our consultation. Um, I know, Lord Mayor, that um, you know, over the years, uh, the approach to consultation for different levels of government has changed considerably. Um, and it seems to be much more in vogue now for people to go out into the community and actually engage with people directly. And I was pleased that when the consultation was happening around the City Connector bus, that was happening. And that our council had people actually going to the bus stops and talking to people. I'd like to see us do more of that style of consultation. And um, indeed, I understand that's being um, done by cities overseas. Let's move away from this passive, um, your say, style consultation that consistently gets very low um, turnout. So yes, I think, have it a review and um, let's look at what comes next. Councillor Kerr. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's interesting. Councillor Sims has revealed himself to be a fan of outsourcing. Um, we've just had a call. Uh, we've just had a call from Councillor Sims uh, for fiscal rectitude, a very uh, uh, surprising call, but one nevertheless um, that has some merit. A call for fiscal rectitude, uh, a call to save money, uh, and indeed a call to not help city businesses in order to save money. Well, you want to save money, Lord Mayor? Start right here. An, in an external and independent investigation. That's $20,000 minimum guaranteed right here. $20,000 guaranteed at an absolute minimum uh, for this for this thing, which I would say is completely not worth it. I'd say to those councillors pushing this, take heed of your own advice from only earlier tonight. This is a waste of money, Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Moon. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I actually agree with Councillor Kira oh, and sure. Councillor Martin and Councillor Sims. It is, it is, your say is crap. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. And I learned that during the Crows thing because, and I actually did make bona fide attempts to make it better, but our team, capable as they were, are only able to operate within the framework of your say. And it's and it's a it's a rubbish interface. It is it is no good. It is no good. Now ultimately there is apathy when it comes to self reporting into these into these things, and you're not going to overcome that um, with a fandangled new. Uh, not only overcome that with a fandangled new um, interface, but it, it is definitely a tool in the kit and one that should be uh, readily used. Um, uh, but at the same time, forty grand, as is how highlighted in the report. Is not necessary, and I'd just like to move an amendment or even a variation of Councillor Martin is uh, is willing just to remove external and independent, um, just because it's a, this isn't this isn't something that needs an independent review. We've got a comms team with thirty four people in it. If they can't if they can't find an alternative that's better, then we shouldn't have a comms team at all. Um, uh, there's no need to spend 40000 I just did a Google search and came up with half a dozen. You've already got one there, Councillor Martin. I don't think you need to spend the money, but I do think we need to fix it. So if you, if I can propose that as a variation. Is that, is that are you happy to accept that, Councillor Martin? <coughs> and seconder, Councillor Sims, thank you. Uh, well, I just want to thank the councillors. I think this is a very good way forward. And, and I also want to just, in my address, highlight and hope the administration takes us on board. Um, if we're not engaging a consultant at a, at, a, at a high price to do this, I do actually expect us to be involved in the process somewhat. Um, dare I say it, you know, a workshop potentially where you can trial a few different options and bring them to us and, and maybe even uh, at one of your residence forums, Lord Mayor, uh, given that they're the ones that predominantly uh, submit to these and they're the ones that by and large take lots of issues with them. Um, perhaps we could engage them and, and get them along and ask them what they think um, uh, as well. So 
uh, I think this is I think this is now a, a very balanced way forward. Um, I, I ultimately do think the councillors, the councillors, should be involved in 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 who you go with in the end, um, so that we're satisfied. But I also do want to see that third party uh, work done as well uh, to engage engage those people that actually submit to your say each and every time. Um, uh, but also noting that there are what eleven and a half thousand people on your say. If assuming you can get that data, I would I would I would assume that you would email them uh, to solicit their feedback on your say. I know it's a bit of con consultation on the consultation software, but um, I think you need to go directly to them and ask them um, what issues they've had with it as well, and then your team can actually look to rectify them um, in your next software. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, thank you, Councillors Martinson. Thank you, Council Moran. Did you wish to speak? A rare occasion. I agree with the Deputy Lord Mayor. Your say it is not out for um, argument. Your say is terrible, and it's not apathy um, because I've seen people that have tried so hard and got into it, and it's the, the as I said, the one strongly disagree. I've managed to get into it, and I'm pretty illiterate on that. But it is an awful. It's a dog of a thing. It has been for years. I'm disappointed that external independent, and not that I don't think that our um, expert administration are able to do it. It seems that we have been complaining about your say for a long time and our expert team has not done anything about it. I've complained I do not want to receive my information in e-news. I still get it in e-news. So um, while I'm happy to uh, go along with the Deputy Lord Mayor removing that and possibly cost, I think this is the last time we should say it. Your say is awful, and we've had some uh, really serious consultations that have gone really skew with because of the inadequacies of that scheme. And uh, as the new members probably didn't know, there was actually a prize offered if you had voted for a helipad in the city. There was also no distinction between who, whether they were our ratepayers or they were people from Woolloomooloo. Uh, during that. And so we got some very, very hard to understand information. But putting that aside, your say is clunky, it doesn't give the right information, and it's hard to use. And uh, get rid of e news as well. <laughs> okay. um, can I just clarify for those that might be joining us on the web that we didn't offer the prize, the prize was offered by a third party uh, when that consultation was going out. Uh, members, if anybody else wishes to speak. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's very interesting um, because um, I do think that we do need to do a, a review um, because the I do hear some conflicting uh, points in regards to people going on to your say. And I think the biggest one is um, the, the registering before they actually go in to um, actually fill out the survey. But it's interesting in noting the administration comments that it's actually used in several capital cities. And then um, I want to know what Melbourne and Sydney use. And Sydney uses SurveyMonkey, which is even worse than you're saying, sorry. And, oh, it's bad. And, um, and Melbourne uses the Hive, which I've never heard of. So maybe in having this, uh, doing this review, is maybe we can compare it against what all capital cities use and what the findings, if they have any, um, in regards to any reporting that they have um, and, and how their community is finding the use of these um, other forums. Um, so I guess um, I know that we've already done a review on your say. Um, I just think maybe we need to dwell on it a lot further, um, so to allow you know the feedback that we have been getting from the public in regard to the use of it, um, you know, more uh, more user friendly for them. And regarding e news, I mean, I, I think Donna um, copies and pastes uh, the e news into a separate email, which works really well for me too. So um, I think she does that for most of the councillors. Thank you, members. I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I'm feeling a bit emotional with all of this support around the place, and particularly from the Deputy Lord Mayor. 
it's actually wrong-footed me to find myself agreeing with him so often tonight. Um, uh, look, I, I uh, just want to make uh, uh, the point that um, I, I'm not asking for a comparison between your say and Inpoint uh, or any other uh, of those platforms. I'm asking for a much broader review. I'm, I'm happy for it to be done by the administration, but something that is a bit more innovative. And uh, the site that I mentioned, uh, which uh, DIT is now using, uh, was, I understand, originally um, uh, used by a Sydney firm in the consultation process related to the construction of the tunnel and freeway. Um, and it has been um, uh, redesigned um, into the engine that it is now. Uh, and it provides, frankly, uh, the most interesting looking platform for public consultation that I've yet seen in that it does provide that opportunity for fine grain information um, within the parameters of what's uh, provided. So um, thank you uh, to the elected members for supporting this. Um, and I do hope that something does come back to us for further discussion uh, and agreement. Okay. Members, if I can put that to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. I think we can record that as unanimous. Um, members, uh, unlike you, I cannot leave the chamber when I wish to. Can I call a five minute break, please? So we haven't got that many items left on the agenda, councillors. So if we can try and be back here in five minutes, we'll see how we go.
Uh, so, members, that takes us at 10.28 to 17.8 on the agenda. Councillor Ho, use of personal e-scooters. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move the motion as print and I look for a second. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor has seconded. Please Thanks, speak. Lord Mayor. Well, members, when I read the administration's comments, I was hesitating whether or not I should withdraw my motions and wait until, you know, maybe in the new year after we get some advices from the National Transport Commission. However, the fact here is, the fact here is, on one hand, on one hand, there were a lot more people in our city start to use the e-scooters to move around in our CBD. And the other thing here is, in a lot of our local stores, they are selling e-scooters. Um, so if you go to Good Guys, they put it right in the middle before the entrance. So everyone coming to Good Guys are able to see it. And if you are the customer, you are the consumer, you see, oh, good guys are selling it. And there were people riding the e-scooters in the CBD. And automatically, you think it is illegal. It is legal to do so. But indeed, it is illegal. So I, so at the end, I said, well, I still, I still move this motion, put it to the floor, and basically ask the law mayor to write to the state government. And it basically deliver the message to them. On one hand, we want to see the legislation change. On the other hand, basically telling them that there are already people using their, their personal e-scooters on road without knowing that it is illegal to do so. Besides, besides, you, if you get caught by the policeman, the fine is going to be over 600 bucks. I have done that once myself during the pandemic. I ride my own e-scooters from Glenside to Guja Street. And I did ride past about 40 different police officers because I ride past the police headquarters. And they all look at me, but none of them caught me. So I was here. Well, they'll yeah. know where you are now, Councillor. <laughs> some of the police officers don't even know it is illegal. If they don't know, what would you expect the public to know all the details? So I think it's our duty on one hand to, you know, kind of like have something like this presented to the state government. I mean, telling them that there's already people doing such things. And basically in our local stores, before they sell it to their customers, they might need to inform them that you are not allowed to ride these e-scooters on a public road at this stage, all right? So, and, and one more thing, I mean, not sure whether or not it's kind of related to over the last two decades, we have already, already lost Mitsubishi and we lost Holden. Whether or not we could have something to be made in our state, like say the e-scooters, can, can we take the leadership on this and making some e-scooters that like really suitable to move people around, not just in the city, maybe in the suburbs as well. Looking at the, and by the way, it doesn't reduce the fossil fuel, all right? And looking at the administration's like comment here, already three minutes. Yes. Uh, can I have another 30 seconds, please? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and, and looking at the administration's comments here saying that, come on, e-scooters ride up 100k. My, my 1985 Holden Camaro can actually drive for up to 170k an hour. But you're not going to ride it in the city like this speed, right? No, so, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, just you know, you just need to have the rules and the, and the guidelines apply, and people will do the right thing. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Hi, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, just quickly, I thank the administration for their comments um, around the National Transport Commission and what have you, and that's that's all very interesting. I'm I'm not so interested in what. Um, in the detail that the other levels of government have to do. This this is more about advocacy, but is it, it is an acknowledgement of the fact, it is an acknowledgement of the fact that people are on their own e-scooters on our footpaths and on our roads today. Every morning, you get up, drive to work, you'll see, you'll see that they're on their own e-scooters. And really, in a, in a sense, the criminalization of personal mobility devices, which is absurd to even say it out loud, but the criminalization actually is a form of blanket deregulation. It's the same idea with sex work, it's the same idea with, with cannabis. Uh, Criminalising it 
um, but not actually addressing the fact that people are still using it really just means you have no regulation in this space whatsoever. So this is really us urging, urging other levels of government to act very quickly, um, uh, quickly in order to, to begin regulating this. I mean, they've been available for years now. They've been available for years now, and the government, the legislation, because because it's because it's set out as a a short list of things that you can do instead of instead of a, a longer list of things that you can't do, or rather, it's a long list of things that you can't do instead of a list of things you can do. Um, it just by virtue of that excludes absolutely everything, and that's the problem. Um, people are using these; they're using them right now. The state government needs to act. Uh, in order to see what standards must be applied to e-scooters that are coming from overseas, uh, and then and then uh, allow them to be used on the roads and set whatever parameters they need around them uh, accordingly. Um, it's a it's a serious safety issue, um, and it, and it must be addressed. If it's good enough uh, for the state government to look at it and license us to be able to or allow us to license them. Uh, providers for them to be used, which are which are because by virtue of the, the economies of scale, they're probably of a lower quality than some of the stuff that that Simon's seen at Good Guys and what have you. Um, uh, if they're if they're good enough to be on the roads, then certainly the other stock that's around there is probably good enough to be on the roads at all. Government legislation and policy needs to catch up in this space, and it, and it's actually quite disappointing to see the lack of innovation from I guess both levels of government if this, in this regard to date. So I, I fully commend this. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And I agree with Councillor Hyde. The Liberal government at the state and federal level have um, really dropped the ball on this. Um, so it, it is a good um, suggestion that he's made. Look, I, I'm very um, supportive of um, this motion. And I think, Lord Mayor, it also sets a really important precedent around advocacy work for this council. Um, it is entirely appropriate for this council to advocate um, for changes to the law, changes to legislation, changes to policy at a state and at a federal level, whether it be in relation to public transport, uh, social housing, range of other initiatives. And um, I think this sets a very important um, precedent in that regard. It's a continuation of the principle established by uh, Councillor Hyde um, previously and has been applied in certain contexts. It's a continuation of that um, now, and I'm very supportive of it. And I think good on you, uh, Councillor Ho, for recognising this council's role as an advocate to state government. Thank you, members. Uh, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I would like to join uh, Councillor Sims and Councillor Hyde and <coughs> Councillor Ho for bringing this motion to the chamber. I too have seen many uh, users of these scooters, <coughs> not the uh, uh, not the beam and neuron ones that are around their uh, <coughs> streets at the moment, but uh, there are personal ones that are that are being used. Um, here is a, a fun, useless fact, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, uh, vehicles that are registered here in the state, um, if if any accidents happen in those vehicles, um, there is an act that. Uh, um, uh, that uh, covers any of the, the, the victims. And I think it's the Lifetime Support Authority Act that actually provides care and support for those victims. Um, the only, there are only two modes of transport that I can think of that aren't covered under that act. One is these uh, scooters, the e-scooters, and the other ones are trams. Um, I'm not going to get uh, stuck into a, uh, into a discussion around what happens if you collide into a tram. Maybe you want to try and then see what happens. But um, uh, what we're seeing at the moment is we're seeing uh, a whole heap of users on our roads and our footpaths <coughs> use these e-scooters. And I think it's, uh, uh, you know, we, we're, staying at, um, we're staying on the front foot here uh, and we're being proactive in highlighting this issue exists. This is an issue of safety. We want people to get around the city nice and safely. Uh, let's address it before uh, someone gets hurt. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just really briefly, um, I have no issue with this. I think the issue is much broader. It's about where e-scooters should be and should not be. Um, and for example, we should be looking to have them on the road, not on the footpath, um, where the majority of people need to be able to have an equitable, safe form of, of transport. So I have no issue with us following through on this. I think the issues are much broader. Thank you. Uh, members, if not, back to Councillor Ho to sum up. Sum up. 
Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, we now go to 17.9 and uh, Councillor Ho, uh, motion on notice bikes and e-scooters on public transport. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as read and I move for a second, please. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, it's quite straightforward though, right? I mean, indeed this idea actually came out after of the conversation I had with Councillor Donovan a few months ago, that like, basically she was telling me that it costs each family $25,000 a year if you have a car. And quite a lot of families actually have two cars. And if we can find a way to help them to reduce one car, that each family saves up to twenty save on average $25,000 a year, therefore they can spend the money elsewhere for better life. And to, to achieve that, to achieve that, we also need to consider that how we actually help the people living in the suburbs to come into the city easily in, the, in all different weather conditions. So I was saying, well, look, not all people can like happy to ride e-scooters from the suburbs or ride a bike from the suburbs into the city, get onto the parade, Green Hill Road, Kensington Road, those main roads. I'm not feeling comfortable to ride my bike on those roads. Certainly not my son of the, you know, the regular bike users, I would say. <laughs> all right. So I was saying that like for other people, that if they are I, I mean, in all different weather conditions or distance, whatsoever, they are able to bring their own bikes or personal e-scooters in the public transportation, trams, trams, and bike and buses. And when they come into the city, when they get off the bus in our city, they can move around with their own, with their own. I mean, either e-scooters or bikes. All right, that's that, that that that's all I have got. I mean, that's why I have got. This idea come up and looking at the comments, it's not going to be easy. But if other cities are able to do it, why can't we? Thanks. Just, just reading it, am I able to suggest a variation as a second? Is that possible? Or is that you can suggest a variation? Oh, thanks. Can't amend, okay. but yeah, the, the the only the only thing that I wanted to capture, which wasn't on there, um, is, is is potentiality for doing what they do in other cities and having bike racks on buses or on public transport. It's in the admin comment. Is that so? Yeah, yeah. Is that is, is the implication of the comment that that is that that's captured in it? Okay, if it is, if it is, um, then I'm happy. I think that's I think that's a really good, uh, really good outcome if we can get if we can get that. Um, there was some scuttle, but I remember talking to some um, uh, people in government uh, around it, and the idea was floated. It's definitely one that has merit. It happens um, elsewhere. It's uh, and not that not that you can necessarily just import ideas from other cities because Adelaide has a unique context. But uh, what we do have are, are, are a lot of buses. Uh, a lot of buses which are underutilised, which is something the previous transport minister sought to fix, but um, sadly it wasn't meant to be. One way that you could potentially get more people on there is by having bike racks on there, so that so that people are able to uh, able to use it um, uh, in a hybrid form. You know, ride to the bus stop or ride from the bus stop to wherever they need to go. Um, uh, so I think this is an excellent idea. I'd love to see it uh, progressed. It's another way that we can help get people into the city alongside um, Happy Drivers Month alongside, um, I think we're investigating free public transport or something crazy like that. But um, this is one of the tools in the kit, one of the tools in the kit um, uh, that we can advocate for to say this, this will help bring people into the city. So uh, thank you again to Simon for bringing it in. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Ho to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, I, I know it's unusual. I do have three motions on notice um, for different reasons that they have actually come through in this way. Um, the first motion on notice 17.10, uh, um, I, and I, I do acknowledge um, Councillor Martin having brought this up on the floor of the chamber previously. Um, I did receive a letter from the minister 
and therefore I need a decision of council so I can go forward. So um, I will move this motion before you and I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Um, so the, uh, the Sansa McDougall building, um, as you know, is local heritage listed, is provisionally uh, listed by the State Heritage Council for state listing and the minister has been approached uh, to um, intervene on that and exercise his power under section 18.7 uh, of the Heritage Places Act to direct council to remove the uh, provisionary, um, uh, provisional entry uh, in the public interest. Uh, so uh, what I'm asking council is to have a look at the motion for them and uh, so that when I speak to the minister uh, later this week, I think it might be, or early next week, that I'm able to speak with a council decision. Um, Councillor Kerry, did you wish to speak to this at all? Uh, only, only to say I wholeheartedly support, uh, support this motion. Um, the, uh, the particular uh, heritage, the particular facade uh, in question uh, is an example, uh, Art Deco, uh, being an Art Deco facade, Art Deco is a particularly rare style uh, in heritage. This is a particularly beautiful example of an Art Deco uh, facade. Uh, the administration comment has covered uh, the reasons why this should be supported, but I, but I really do commend uh, to the chamber uh, this this motion in support of this uh, endeavour. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Mayor, I, I'm a bit puzzled. I, I know that standing orders don't prevent a presiding member from <laughs> asking questions on notice or motions on notice, mm -hmm. um, uh, but. Um, uh, our, our principles, our standing orders are based on the Westminster system, which always calls for an independent chair. A and I just wonder, have you given any thought to how you moderate a debate about your own motion? Is there not a problem there? Uh, as, as I know that you have asked uh, that advice of uh, governance, I'm very happy for governance no, no, to I answer that question no, in I terms of... Um, if there's a point of order, for instance, then I'll defer to the Deputy Lord Mayor to take over the chair so that I don't do preside over a point of order. And if there's a tied vote? If there's a tied vote, my understanding is that I still have casting. So you have casting there, vote there won't be casting. Own. There won't be a casting vote this evening because we, we don't... No, no, I know, but we're setting a principle here, a precedent. <coughs> My understanding through governance is that if there's a tied vote, I still have casting vote as a presiding member. Over your own motion? Apparently. Isn't that a conflict of interest? Um, that's what the, the rules are. Um, it's also, it's not um, unprecedented. Um, I know that Martin Hazy took three, four motions in his term of council as, and, uh, sorry, uh, Lord Mayor Yarwood did similarly. Um, uh, these ones are timely and uh, right, members, I'll just ask you if you don't support them. I did actually take governance advice, Councillor Moran, before I actually entered these But motions. Lord Mayor, you're correct in saying the previous Lord Mayors did that. What they did was said that they had given a motion to a councillor to move on their behalf. Therefore, they maintaining the independence and will be comfortable with that. I have never seen an independent Lord Mayor move the motion out. It is just not true that other councils have done it. And I disagree with governments vehemently. The whole principle of our Lord Mayoral system, and that's why you are voted independently from the rest of us rather than us choosing you as a chair, is that you are an independent chair. And I think these are, are, are you should stick to that even if you think that your advice on independent government it is wrong. And I would like the Lord to check that and I think you should remove these, ask somebody else to remove that motion without notice and they all they had to check. Did you want to make any comments on that? Really, Lord Mayor, look, I think we have taken some advice to be no, absolutely crystal. Yeah, it is, it is, there's never <laughs> <laughs> the Lord Mayor said that other Lord Mayors have done it. Lord Mayor, there's Mayor. either there's either a point of order here or there's that not. Is not done. Can we move on? That is not correct. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Moran. I will defer to the Lord Mayor. Thank you. 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 Thank well, Lord Mayor, look, I, I echo that. I'd be quite happy for you to ask someone to move it. I don't have any problem with that. It's just the moderating and then casting a vote, if necessary, to, to break a tied vote. Yeah. Just, 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 just,
I think three. I mean, I think it's important that we do clarify the advice that we have so that you can be sure of the, pro the approach that's been taken. Rudy, do you want to read that out? Do you see the speaker in Parliament, William Morrison? Councillor Moran, can we actually hear from you? Through the Lord Mayor, the meeting regulations, uh, that is Regulation 12, provide that a member may bring forward any business for the Council's consideration at a meeting by way of uh, either a written notice of motion or a motion without notice. The definition of member is set out in Section 4 of the Local Government Act as the principal member or a councillor, so both the Mayor and the councillor are defined. Um, this um, has been verified by external legal, um, so it's not just... Until we see that external legal, this is unprecedented, I've never seen a Lord Mayor... Thank point, you, point, councillor point, 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 point of order, Lord Mayor. Um, Point of order, Lord Mayor. Uh, if you were to bring forward something uh, contentious, then I think it is uh, it is open to members to uh, to raise a point of order uh, in so far as any impartiality, uh, <coughs> any lack of uh, any failure of impartiality on your behalf. It is open to members to do that at any point with a motion that you bring forward. Uh, given that the it would seem that you're bringing forward motions without uh, such. Um, uh, sorry, it's late. Um, without that, uh, you know, they're not sort of controversial. But, but at any rate, the point, the point remains: uh, we can raise impartiality as a point of order at any time. I'll submit that. Thank you. There, we have taken advice. I will actually continue with this motion, uh, Lord and Mayor, then I, I, I will uh, address the other two. So. I was uh, uh, speaking, and I asked a question to begin with. That is whether this is appropriate. I, I accept your advice. I don't agree with it, um, and this is. This is contentious. Um, I am saying to you that this matter is ultra vires. It contravenes uh, decision 2020-00594 presented to Council on the 2nd of June 2020. Uh, and until that is rescinded, you cannot move this. Decision. Could I have some advice on that, please? Through the Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin, are you raising a point of order? I, I am saying that this is you are raising a point of order. Okay. In that case, uh, there needs to be a ruling on the point of order. So we invoke that process. Can so I, can I, could I, I actually have to understand what Councillor Martin has just said. So it was the decision from the 2nd of June. Can we have a look at the decision of the 2nd of June, which I know that you're referring to? And see whether this is ultra vires in terms of that decision, um, which Lord, was about the um, um, the uh, toilets in Jones Place, correct? Uh, well, Lord Mayor, that's confidential. This is still confidential, and it's in contravention of the confidential uh, item. Um, uh, that confidential Members, item. I'll way, withdraw Lord this. Mayor. I'll withdraw this motion, and I will speak to Lord, Lord Mayor. The, I'm, I'm happy to move this uh, from the floor uh, in lieu if you if wish the, to. If the motion is ultra vires, we can't move the motion. So I will withdraw this, mo this motion from the floor. Lord well, Mayor, I'm happy to move into confidence, to move that we move into confidence if, so that Councillor Martin can discuss the contents of that. Okay, can we leave this one till the end then and continue with the agenda rather than going well, into confidence? Lord Mayor, may, may I assist? Um, it is uh, the, uh, with the authority of the CEO that this can be lifted at any time. It is not current. Um, it can be lifted now and we can discuss it in open council. Um, members, I will ask for someone to defer this to, or uh, can, I, uh, can I just move it to the end of the agenda? Well, that's your decision. <laughs> yeah, that's not an impression. Okay, so I'm going to withdraw the motion, members, and uh, we don't have a decision from this council to talk to the minister, but I will be talking to the minister. Um, members, I have a motion on notion, a motion on notice uh, 17.11, which is the Adelaide Parklands Foundation. Um, I'm going to look to my deputy Lord Mayor. Will you move this motion on my behalf? I would prefer if you did, Lord Mayor, it's your hard work. No, I'm very happy for you to move it, Deputy. Uh, I'm happy, shall I do it as a motion without notice? No, you just move it on my behalf. 
Okay, I move the motion is printed and seek a second. And uh, a seconder in Councillor Sims. Uh, point, point of order, Lord Mayor, uh, you cannot reassign a mover to a motion. To move from the Except floor. there's a motion without notice. Motion without notice, Alex, you know that, otherwise we'll challenge. Can I just Alex? Alex, you're the That's okay, I'll move it on uh, without notice. Members, I am going to move the motion 17.11. So I'll move that myself and I'll seek a seconder. Thank you. I have Councillor Sims. Um, members, unfortunately, the information that I had hoped that would go out with uh, the, this motion on the foundations, uh, the setting up of the foundation, um, wasn't able to. So really as background, uh, there have been several attempts through uh, the Parklands Authority to set up a foundation. Uh, the first one came through in 2009 and it concluded that the Parklands uh, Authority through the Parklands Act, does, pro which provides for the creation of a Parklands Fund, uh, it concluded that although it could have a Parklands Fund, it's not eligible for a deductible gift recipient with DGR status. And that's because it's a subsidiary of council and therefore does not have a required level of independence. Uh, subsequently, there was another motion in 2012, uh, again, which sought legal advice, which came back with the same thing, that they could not set it up as a, a separate entity um, and have DGR status. And again, a motion on notice um, in uh, March 2019, um, which uh, confirmed that the DGR uh, endorsed foundation would require legal and operational autonomy from its subsidiary. Um, so as such, this is a request to have a look at the frameworks. I have investigated um, quite a number of frameworks um, and had a look at uh, the various advice that has come through previously to council. And uh, we can do that as a council to set up an autonomous uh, foundation with its own board. Um, 
it would look that uh, propose, I'm proposing that the Adelaide Parklands Foundation would raise funds on behalf of parklands projects and initiatives which protect and enhance the parklands, but not for operations um, or the general upkeep uh, or maintenance of the parklands. And it's, it's very, very specific in terms of the rules around the setup of these organisations that have DGR status. Um, and in that, we would have to uh, make sure that we have the governance model correct so that we have the statutory principle that talks to what we are raising funds for. Um, I've, I've talked to several of you about this. I do think that um, the work uh, that I would like to share with council as we get some more legal advice around um, the framework is really looking at how the council would work uh, with APLA using um, the parklands management strategy as a guide for investment, which would then come back to council for endorsement and council would then ask the foundation for that money to be released for that project. So um, it really is a, a, a fair bit of work that would needs to be done. But I think that given that there's been attempts over the last uh, 10 years or more, um, that we can uh, finally move ahead with a parklands foundation under this uh, framework and I will hand over to Councillor Sims. Thanks um, very much Lord Mayor and look I'm very pleased um, that you've taken this uh, up and um, I think the last attempt was my own back in March uh, 2019 when I proposed um, this through um, APLA and my reason for doing so was I saw that this as being a, a good opportunity for us to really elevate the cause of um, parklands protection and recognising that there are lots of people in our community that value the parklands, but that it lacks um, an independent funding stream and that there isn't a mechanism for members of the community to contribute. The really critical thing um, for me, as you've outlined um, in your um, opening remarks, Lord Mayor, is that the fact that this has to be in keeping with the Adelaide Parklands Management Strategy um, projects have to be recommended by APLA. So of course it's not for commercial operations, but what it is, is um, a mechanism for members of the community to make a donation so that they can support good work being done in the parklands and increasing community use and understanding of the public space. Um, I know the City of Sydney has had something similar um, in place. They've funded some really exciting initiatives in terms of community education and understanding of the parklands. And I'd love to see this foundation um, do that kind of work. Um, but also they have an ambassadors program where you have leading people in the community coming on board and advocating for the parklands. I think that would be really exciting too. And um, this comes at an important time for our city because we've seen more and more people using the parklands and appreciating them as a result of um, the pandemic. And um, I think what has come with that is more of an appreciation for our public space and the value of that public space. And so I think this foundation could play a really important role in that. Um, so as I say, I'm very pleased that, um, that you've uh, followed um, through on this and I look forward to seeing the advice that comes back and, and how we can implement it. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I speak vigorously against this. Um, I moved the first one for Rob um, in the early days of APLA and um, it was explained to me why this wasn't a good idea for uh, in our um, economic uh, setup. Uh, in America and Sweden and countries with tax setups that encourage large foundations to be set up for uh, good works, museums, art galleries, parklands, gardens, these are enormous tax minimisation um, vehicles and they work very well and they do pour money into good works and they're very strictly, uh, have very strict guidelines. So it's not like because you're rich, you can pay for something. We don't have those. Um, the foundation will A, not work. Um, there are better ways to minimise your tax than uh, slapping it down for the parklands. Uh, this also opens the door, and I can see it as clearly as I can see this room. 
uh, wealthy benefactor pops a couple of mil down on the table next year, asks for something. It takes the, finan the financial control that we have on the parklands is a burden to the council, but it's also a huge power. It gives us the, um, it gives us a big seat at the table. The government obviously, as you can see in most years, rolls over us every decade and puts another building on the parklands, be it, be it the Oval or a, or a wine museum or now a new stadium. And that unfortunately is their right. They're the state government and we're the council. But if you open this up, who's going to put money down on a foundation? A very, very wealthy family. And they're going to want something for their money. We run the parklands pretty well. What do you really think they're going to say, here, I'm going to give you $10 million, I want you to plant some more trees and get a bit of lawnmower. No, they're not. They're going to say, I want a statue. I want a flower clock, which is a nice version of it. Um, I want something for my money. I want a big statue of Mr. Gerard. They're not going to just put it in there for the sake of having better maintained parklands. That's not how wealthy benefactors work, unless they're doing it. The only way they'll do it with that, with the public benefit, if they're receiving a huge tax incentive, such as the wealthy American Swedes, da 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 da. We don't have a tax system like that. We don't have an economy like that. We're not set up for foundations. This is a Trojan horse. Be very, very afraid. It sounds lovely, doesn't it? And I'm sure that's why the Lord Mayor has broken the, the uh, rules of, of, of hundreds of years and decided to move it in her name, because it sounds very good on the surface. But there are many things, better things to put philanthropic money in as a man that I must know. Surely if you have money to spare, it would be better to put it into poor people's housing, fixing homelessness, things such as that, stopping battered women, looking after poor children, donating to the Smith family. We have thousands of children going to school in thongs in the middle of winter. I don't want to encourage rich people to put their money to minimise their tax, which won't be that effective, so they won't, into our park lands. There's, it's no need and it's dangerous. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I'm happy to lend my support to this motion and the intent of the motion. The there reason I absolutely understand the uh, points, Councillor Moran, that you're making. Um, However, already in the world of philanthropy, um, it is a very, very diverse set of opportunities to improve the public good um, through the making of uh, deductible donations. Um, and those, those systems, whether it's the art gallery or the museum or the history trust, my organisation, um, uh, or, or, or you know, um, charities uh, doing very important work, um, We've, we are a very, very wealthy society. It's, it, of course, is not evenly distributed. And there are people, uh, both um, high net worth individuals and companies and, and more modestly um, um, resourced uh, individuals who, um, who see merit in, in making contributions. Um, the opportunities and given that the, park, the city squares and their relationship to the park lands uh, is, is a moot um, area of, of discussion. Um, public art in the park lands would be something I would well imagine people, uh, some people would be attracted to support. And it's not about the donor being able to tell uh, the instrument, what it is, or the governance of the instrument, what it is that those funds would be used for. Generally speaking, a proposal is identified by the governing uh, uh, entity and um, uh, goes through the processes such as uh, are envisaged um, in this motion. And um, uh, um, I, I think due diligence in, in working through the establishment of this would also need to incorporate market research uh, uh, to give us the confidence that the effort uh, um, has the potential over a period of many years 
uh, to produce dividends. Uh, but I, I think the parklands are an overwhelming public good. Um, it's great that the city uh, ratepayers overwhelmingly fund the parklands, and I don't see this as competition to that. I see it as a way of, of expanding the delivery of public good in the parklands. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, I, I too uh, speak in support of the motion. I, I endorse Councillor Mackey's comments. Uh, I think they are very, they are very sage comments from practical experience uh, about this proposal. In relation to Councillor Moran's criticisms, well, um, look, uh, I think you know, I think a, a flower plot uh, would be a good. Uh, exchange for a multi-million dollar uh, donation towards the uh, well-being of the parklands. I think a statue on the other hand uh, would not be. But what Councillor Moran has not articulated uh, is any basis on which uh, we would be compelled uh, to, 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 uh, to accept uh, uh, conditions attached to donations. There, there are no reasons why we would be compelled to accept those donations. Uh, what we do have, on the other hand, is an amazing opportunity to, uh, to, allow, the foster, to allow the fostering uh, and, and the nurturing of the parklands and expand uh, the input of people uh, with, with money. Um, imagine the art gallery uh, without uh, uh, the art gallery in South Australia without its, all its donations. You know, um, it's it it it, it does not uh, the, the the cons that have been articulated do not in any way outweigh the pros uh, for this. I think uh, there could be some really beautiful things uh, that come out uh, from this uh, in, in subsequent years, and I really do commend this motion to the chamber. Councillor Kira, Councillor Knoll. Just in short, I mean, we're in control uh, of, or so say, the organisation is in control of how we roll this out. And therefore, you know, given that the concerns uh, that Councillor Moran has raised, you know, that we are uh, uh, at least accommodating those sorts of potential issues in the way we actually structure the, uh, the actual foundation, etc. And I think we have the capacity to be able to minimise any, any sorts of issues just because we have thought about them and enable them to be, uh, uh, you know, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Stane. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I think um, uh, Councillor Moran has raised some uh, uh, valid concerns, but I think with a strong uh, governance model, as Councillor Mac 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 talked about, we can overcome some of those. So, uh, having a strong framework, uh, really uh, having oversight of the criteria, and, uh, and ensuring that uh, there is uh, a good and clear oversight. We can definitely uh, address those concerns uh, and I'll be uh, supportive of this motion. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Look, Lord Mayor, I, um, I'm genuinely conflicted about this because I, I actually uh, am, was a supporter uh, of this when this was raised by uh, Councillor Sims. Um, and um, in fact, I've spoken to people about a foundation of this nature and thought it was a good idea. Um, until I listened to uh, Councillor Moran. And, and uh, um, Councillor Moran has raised a reasonable concern uh, about the expectation of donors that there is something in it for them. Uh, and look, you know, I'd extrapolate it further. I'm worried about corporate donations. I'm not just worried about families uh, wanting a statue of their uh, dearly departed erected in the parklands. Um, it would be, um, uh, I guess, possible for a large corporate entity to make a donation to the foundation and uh, for there to be an expectation that some proposal they had might go ahead, whether that's a restaurant, a bar, um, uh, a Clipsal, um, a Crow's Headquarters, um, uh, that I hadn't considered that does actually open up for me uh, some concerns about this. And uh, yes, they can be ameliorated depending on the rules, um, but um, rules are made to be broken. And uh, we have just been through that process with the Crows where um, Parklands, inalienable, uh, held uh, in trust for the people of South Australia, were actively considered as a headquarters for the Crows and may yet be considered as a headquarters for, a headquarters for the Crows um, if they so choose to put an unsolicited bid to this council. Are we, are we speaking to the motion? Yes, I am. Please, I am. Is, no, you're not. You're speaking to This the, goes to the nub of it, Lord Mayor. Um, this is the issue that Councillor Moran raised. That is to say, 
there is a risk. Um, and I am, not, I am not seeing, and I'm being genuine about this, I am not seeing any mechanisms that accompany this proposal that would provide some comfort to me to say that this uh, cannot, will not occur. Um, now, if, if, and I, I recognise that uh, the team will vote in support of it, I recognise that it will go through. If it comes back to Council uh, with the framework that would give me the comfort that our parklands are protected and that there is no possibility of any influence being exerted <coughs> over Council as a consequence of a donation, um, then I will support it. Um, but on the basis of what's presented, um, uh, I'm worried about the risk. <coughs> Members, so in summing up, um, the whole point of a foundation is that it is independent. Um, there should be no expectations of donors. There are very, very stringent rules around donations and that there are no benefits for donations, otherwise they're not considered donations or tax deductible. And yes, what I've requested here is that the framework um, to establish a legally uh, independent entity does come back. Um, there are many things that I think we can do with that, and we do have 150,000 trees, uh, of which 35,000 is significant, and I think that we can actually add to the number of trees as well as perhaps look at some uh, things that can encourage those lower and middle to it donors to really engage and connect with the parklands, and also around education, and in particular things around Ghana um, environmental officers, which I know has been discussed at APLA on many occasions. Um, this is about public good. This is about the people of South Australia uh, and outside South Australia being able to contribute to something that is a South Australian icon and needs to be protected and enhanced. And on that note, um, I look forward to further discussions uh, with Council around what that framework is and how we set up a separate uh, legally independent identity. Um, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canal, Councillor Ho, Councillor Carer, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. Um, I am actually going to withdraw the uh, note, the motion on notice uh, 17.10, which is the Sanderson McDougall, because um, we need to take some further legal advice on that one. The CEO, is there anything? Yep, Lord Mayor, happy to do that. We'll, we'll review the matter in, in the context of the previous resolution of council, take some legal advice, and call a special meeting of council as soon as possible to deal with it as appropriate. Thanks. <coughs> Um, members, that takes us to the last item, which is 17.12. Uh, could I just say that the title of this is incorrect? It should just be the Home Buyers Remission Scheme. Um, I will move it from the chair and I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Um, uh, this is uh, as actually possibly, I can't remember Councillor Martin if you were here, but certainly Councillor Moran, you would remember that we did do uh, a scheme several years ago, uh, which was in concert with the state government, and that was to encourage um, uh, new off the plan actually purchases within the city. Um, I've actually reviewed what happened at that point and we decided because that was quite open, there were 125 people that took up that rebate, um, but they weren't targeted any particular sector. So there were people that were spending millions of dollars on apartments and things that were still getting the rebate, which included um, land tax and um, sorry, stamp duty. Um, so this is looking at uh, a similar scheme, but really looking to increase residential growth and with the aim of attracting key workers. And um, and again, this uh, the key workers were really around um, uh, what we would call essential workers, which are uh, teachers, nursing professionals, uh, uh, fire, 
fireys, our, our police, health workers, etc. And um, really so that the people that are working and looking to uh, protect our city and that have been so important, particularly over the last six months with the uh, uh, pandemic, um, also find that this is the best place that they could possibly live. What we have done through um, through the last six months have proven that we're not only one of the most livable cities in the world, we are absolutely one of the safest and, uh, and I think one of the most affordable. And we need to make sure that we continue to have that diversity in the city of residents and we need to encourage people of all um, uh, uh, different um, um, professions to come and join us in the city and they'll soon find out that they will save money on a car councillor ho because they won't need one they can walk or catch the tram or the city connector um, that they it is absolutely a walking city or ride their bike and uh, uh, they can also save money by doing that. They will save money on parking, they'll save money on transport, and they will find everything at their fingertips that makes, um, in my view, life worth living, uh, including a fantastic food culture in the city of Adelaide. Um, that's enough from me, Councillor Abrahams. Um, just to quickly uh, uh, mention that I wholeheartedly uh, support this uh, motion, and yes, you're right, Lord Mayor, we should be looking at uh, growing our residential base. Given that we have had a, a hard year, uh, the businesses that we do have in the city do rely on that traffic, uh, and um, uh, hopefully that will uh, make things easier for them in the future. <laughs> Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I won't talk um, for long. I know uh, all too well um, how difficult it can be when one's motions are being dealt with um, late at night. So I empathise with you, um, having moved uh, many uh, motions um, myself, but it is the right of elected members to put motions forward um, and uh, to have them um, have them uh, discussed. And there are things that sometimes sit outside of the strategic plan that we should um, discuss uh, through, um, through council. Um, but uh, Lord Mayor, I guess I'm, I'm just keen to clarify what is the definition of um, key worker in terms of um, income uh, base, um, because I really hope that when this work is being done that there is a consideration of um, means testing or some other criteria. So what, what is intended when you talk about key work? Um, there is absolutely uh, an, in, an intention that it is looking at that salary base. Now, I don't actually have the notes in front of me, but I think it was a single was 85 and a couple was 110. Thank you, Councillor Abrams. So we were looking at actually a particular um, wage um, salary bands um, and that actually goes with those key worker categories that I was talking to you about. It also includes hospital workers, child carers, cleaners, laundry workers, all that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. Thanks Lord Mayor and look uh, with that in mind I'm very happy to um, support this. I think uh, this is, um, <coughs> excuse me, supporting people from um, low incomes, helping them uh, potentially, you know, um, give them some relief. My worry initially when I read the motion was that I didn't want to see us giving subsidies to people who you know, are potentially millionaires being able to buy. Um, but I think looking at some means testing, and my hope would be that administration would do that when they um, develop the eligibility criteria. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran. It'll be millionaires' children who buy. <laughs> That's important last time. Um, I move uh, is that to be seconded? Would anybody like to second the motion be put? Deputy Lord Mayor? Was that your second? Yes, that Thank me. you. Yes, uh, then members, the motion will be put. Yeah. Those in favour? Those against? <laughs> That's for the motion to be put. So could I just do that again? This is for the motion to be put. Those in favour that the motion is put? Those against? Uh, that is carried. So now I'll put the motion. Members, those in favour of the motion? Those against? That, that is carried. Council members, division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham Zadane, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerak, Councillor Mack, Councillor Kerak.
Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Simon. Uh, thank you, members. That takes us to items eight, uh, sorry, number 18 on the agenda. Motions without notice. It's still standing. <laughs> uh, sorry, members, there are any motions without notice? Um, therefore, I will close the meeting. Thank you very much, Councillor Kouros. I just want to take this opportunity, Lord Mayor, to wish um, Councillor Mackey. Oh, yes. Shall we sing? <laughs> Councillor Mackey, happy birthday. Um, Lord Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Of course, there is, there is talk that in the pandemic year that all birthdays are cancelled. Correct. I actually moved that motion. <laughs> <laughs> They're multiplied by 10. <laughs>